after last week's upset win over North Carolina A&T, the momentum pendulum is in favor of Tyrone Wheatley's Morgan State Bears. They hope to keep the momentum on their side and pick up a few more wins and carry that success right into next fall. It's handstands all around. It's senior day at Hughes Stadium. The Bears looking to slay a dragon and send a great senior class out with back-to-back -back home wins. It's football time again at Morgan State. Good afternoon and welcome to Hughes Stadium on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. The 0-8 Dragons of Virginia University of Lynchburg facing the 2-8 Bears of Morgan State. It's the MEAC Digital Network game on ESPN3. Hi, everybody. Great to see you again this week. I'm Phil Shaner, always alongside the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. Final home game of the year for Morgan State, and Lynchburg is in town, so the seniors, they're very excited. Guys like Bailey, guys like Chase, they want to put up big numbers on senior day. Well, this is why you love college football, because you get to watch guys like Menashe Bailey develop over the course of his career, and he's put on a spectacular show his entire senior campaign, looking to close it out with a big one against Lynchburg. And Josh Chase, he wants to go out in style as well. Absolutely. You talk about another guy that has been an integral part to this offense throughout these coaching staff changes. He's been a bell cow for this run game. We'll see if he can continue to do that today. On the defensive side, last game at Hughes Stadium for a great bunch of players. Like guys like Rico Kennedy, Ian McBurrow, and of course, the guy on your screen, Carl Garns. I always talk about Carl Garns because I'm a big fan of the versatility that he brings to the table. He can play any one of the secondary spots on the back end. He's a tremendous player. These two teams played in 2015. The Bears won that game 61-0 that day. Will be that kind of game today. It's the Dragons and the Bears. Kickoff is coming up. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Lots of sunshine on the campus of Morgan State University. Much colder. High of just 45 winds out of the northeast. 10 to 25 miles an hour. It'll be blowing around Hughes Stadium for today's matchup. Morgan State 2-8. and eight. Overall 2-5. and five. And the MEAC posted a big 22-16 upset over the number 14 team in the country. North Carolina A&T last Saturday under second uh, first-year coach Tyrone Wheatley. 2-8. and eight. It was announced as the Bears' 22nd head coach on February 21st of this year. Previously spent two seasons as a running back coach in the NFL for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Of course, Coach Wheatley played college football at Michigan in the NFL with the Raiders and the Giants. As far as Virginia Lynchburg is concerned, they suffered a 55-7 loss at Southern and Baton Rouge, Louisiana last week, and they are 0-8 on the season. Their coach is Bobby Rome in his second season, former college and professional player. He played at the University of North Carolina as a fullback. Also played a little bit in the NFL, in and out of there, and had a, a stint in the United Football League. Was also a member of the Federation of American Football of Russia League, and he's 2-15 and 15 in his two seasons uh, at Virginia Lynchburg. And of course, Coach Wheatley, 2-8 and eight in his first year with the Morgan State Bears, and it is senior day and the final home game. Morgan State, of course, with that big win last week. Maybe a win here this week. Next week they go to Howard. Possibly a chance to finish the season on a three-game win streak. What would that mean to a Tyrone Wheatley, Morgan State Bear team? It means everything to the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen on this football team because it lays the foundation for what could possibly be next season. So going out with wins right now is always big for a program, especially for your seniors going out on the high note. But for the guys that are following those seniors, this is a big piece of the foundation that he can build on in the winter workouts and spring practices. Virginia Lynchburg, they won the toss but deferred to the second half, so we're about to get underway. It's the Dragons and the Bears today from Baltimore, Maryland on senior day here at Hughes Stadium for Morgan State. So the Dragons kick things off and we're underway. Non-conference game for Morgan State, the second to last game of the season. 
And the return there by Cofield across the 40-yard line, and that's where the Morgan State Bears offense will get things going. DeAndre Harris coming off his best game of his career a week ago in the upset win, and in the backfield, and Chase and Johnson will see, see Parker and Williams running the football. Wide receivers, Bailey's been playing big, of course. He's fifth in the MEAC in catches and third in yards and eighth in the MEAC in touchdown grabs. That's the Morgan State offense with the offensive line that has improved as the season has gone on. And Harris going to throw the football, looking down the field, and he'll run it across the 44-yard line where he was out of bounds. Let's take a look at the starting defense for this Virginia Lynchburg Dragons team. They are 0-8. They're giving up 51 points a game. The defense has struggled. They're giving up 252 yards, rushing 196 yards, passing. Templer is their leading tackler, number three. The linebacker, 5'10", 225 pounds. Yeah, they nearly gave up a touchdown on that first play. Cofield was streaking wide open down the field, but Harris missed him. Second and three. Chase across into Dragon territory. So a seven-yard pickup, and that'll move the sticks and a first down for Morgan State. Straight inside zone run right there. Nice kick out block by your interior offensive line in Dallas Capriotti. Did a great job right there and, and blowing him out another redshirt freshman seeing some time up front. But Morgan State's going to keep it simple here, run downhill, throw when they have to, and try to get some points up on the board. Harris has the completion. Wolfolk with the grab. Wolfolk down the field, breaks some tackles. Wolfolk still on his feet inside the five-yard line, and he's down to the two. Wes Wolfolk down to the two-yard line, and that was all Wolfolk breaking some tackles and getting all the way down to the two. Well, this is what you want to see from DeAndre Harris. He had a really good game the last time we saw him against North Carolina a and and you want to see how he's able to carry that over to the next game. He's already off to a great start. Harris last week, 218 yards and a touchdown, and probably his best game of his career last week against North Carolina a and So first and goal for Morgan Strait. They're looking to strike first. Joshua Chase gets the handoff, surges in, and touchdown Morgan State. Joshua Chase in from two yards out, and that's his fourth rushing touchdown of the season, and the Bears strike first. Nice four-play drive right there for Morgan State. Quickly got down the field, set up nice by a nice return on the opening kickoff, but just a good inside run. Once again, that interior offensive line of Morgan State, I thought, have been doing a great job in the last three games, and they're starting to see some success pay off with touchdowns. On for the extra point is Nick O'Shea. Four-play, 60-yard drive, went 150. The kick is up, and the kick is good. The last time the Dragons were here at Hughes Stadium in 2015, Morgan State scored in the first 15 seconds. This time, it took them 150, but Joshua Chase goes in from two yards out, and Morgan State has the 7-0 lead. Well, you talk about a big confidence boost for that offense. We, their offense was doing a great job last week against North Carolina a he got that upset. You want to see how they were going to come out and set the tone in this ball game against Virginia Lynchburg, and it's just a great start for this offense, showing you that last week wasn't a fluke for what they bring to the table, running the football and now throwing the football as well. Joshua Chase gets his third, fourth rushing touchdown of the season. 417 yards rushing coming in to today's game. Two games left today. And then next week, they wrap it up in the MEAC on the road down in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., against a struggling Howard team, the Beltway rivalry, a week from today. It was shakeup Saturday last week in the MEAC. Not only did Morgan State pull the upset, so did Delaware State. So really, with both Bethune-Cookman and North Carolina A&T both losing, it was kind of like a scratch. Now they're playing each other today in the, in the big game in the MEAC today. And if you're South Carolina State, you're looking at everything going, hey, we have an opportunity to get back into this conversation for the Celebration Bowl. Let's see what uh, Rambert can do on the return. Rambert up to the 20-yard line. That's as far as he will get for the Dragons. This is a Dragon offense that's only scoring 10 points a game. They're averaging just 44 yards rushing a game and 179 yards passing. Brown is the quarterback. Newman and Davis, watch out for Rambert, one of their top targets. He has 34 catches this season. Also, Joshua Gray, another wide receiver with a couple of touchdowns for the Virginia Lynchburg Dragons. So a first and 10 from the 20 for the Dragons down 7-0. Only took 
Morgan State four plays to get into the end zone. Newman on the carry, and he loses a yard out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Of course, this Morgan State defense was awesome a week ago. Perry had an interception and a sack. Kennedy had an interception and a sack. And take a look at this Morgan State defense. The linebackers are great. Kennedy, McBurrow, Washington was great last week. And then Garns, Thorns, Gatlin, Trigg, that secondary is good. Pretty good uh, defensive unit for Morgan State. Brown throws the football down the field, has a man wide open. This one could go all the way for the score, and it will. Touchdown, Dragons. How about that? They go deep, and they find 81-yard touchdown. Brown goes deep for the touchdown for the Dragons. That was a great job recognizing what happened on that play by Sherman Brown, the QB. He saw Morgan State jump offside, and Syed Sidebe went straight down the field like a good receiver should. And Brown hit him right in stride for a touchdown. Side to B with a touchdown grab. He, it's his 19th catch of the season. And his first touchdown. And the extra point is blocked. But the Dragons answer the Bears' score on an 80-yard touchdown. A two-play, 79-yard drive. Took 42 seconds off the clock. Brown with a touchdown pass. And it's a 7-6 game on ESPN3. Well, the Virginia Lynchburg Dragons showed up about 40 minutes before kickoff, but they came to play, and they answered the Morgan State drive with an 81-yard hookup. Brown to Sabib for the touchdown, and it's a 7-6 game. Morgan State will get the football back after their four-play 60-yard drive. They could be in for a lot of points today here at Hughes Stadium. Cofield on the return, still on his feet, and gets to the 30-yard line, and that's where Morgan State will have the football. So what happened on that play? How was Sabib that wide open? Well, Morgan State jumped offside, and they kind of stopped, but Sherman Brown knew that was a free play. Even though the ref didn't throw the flag, Morgan State anticipated the ref throwing the flag. Brown told CDB go straight down the field, and he just launched that football right in stride to the receiver, and you saw the secondary was slow playing it, thinking that they were going to get called for a neutral zone infraction, but it didn't happen. That's why you got to play through the whistle. How about that? And it's a 7-6 game here. Just underway, 12-10 to go first quarter. Harris quick pass to Bailey. Bailey makes a man miss, still spinning, but good job by the Dragons to get him for a tackle for a loss. So Bailey tried to spin his way out of trouble, but the Dragons kept coming. It's a great job right there. You called that great team defense. And what you're seeing now from Virginia Lynchburg is a team that literally just got off the bus, got a a quick score, got some confidence, and we'll see what can, they can do on this defensive series because if they can get another stop here or get a stop here, it bodes well for their chances in this ball game to continue to build on that confidence. Loss of five on that Bailey catch. That's his 45th catch of the season and his 106th catch of his career for the senior Bailey. Of course, last week with that handstand, that was big-time stuff. Joshua Chase with a nice run there. Or Johnson on the carry, sorry. Johnson gets up to the 34-yard line. So that was a good run by Johnson. Shifty moves. Johnson can make you miss. And that's a guy that Coach Wheatley, as a freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, he's a guy he's relying on as the future of this running game. This offensive line of Morgan State is just doing a fantastic job up front opening up holes. And it's just a combination of what we saw from them the last five games. And last week did a great job against the Aggies as well. Third and six. Harris, pressure. He is sacked. The Dragons come back and a huge loss. Harris sacked in the backfield. And what a job by the Dragons coming up to make the sack. That's just a great job defensively coming off the edge, number 51. And this is the confidence that we talked about where it starts to be it starts to be contagious you have a play on offense you make a play on on first down defensively and now on third down you get the sack so virginia lynchburg did exactly what they want to do on this defensive series they forced a quick three and out or a four play drive get, getting the punt and pushing them back into a situation where they could have great field position o'shea to punt it rambert back to receive the punt for the dragons and not a great punt and that's a Good field position for the Dragons. They'll start in Morgan State territory with the ball at the 42-yard line in a 7-6 game and a first and 10 for Virginia Lynchburg. 
we're not joking when we're saying Virginia Lynchburg got off the bus. They literally showed up, like you talked about, about 40 minutes before kickoff. And right now, I know people joke about the word momentum, but I feel as though they've stolen that momentum early in this ball game and have a chance to really make things very interesting. They came out ready to play. Oregon State looks like they've come out flat. Oregon State fresh off the upset win last week against North Carolina A&T here at Hughes Stadium. Brown, slow snap, is going to have to keep it himself and gets up to the 41-yard line before he was stopped. Teague made the stop for Morgan State after the short gain, and the snap was low for Brown. He had no choice but to try to run it. Yeah, that's a smart play by Brown. No need to try to step back and try to fire that football downfield. Just get what you can and keep it in the second and manageable situation. Brown, handoff to Newman. Newman on the right side, loses the football. The ball's on the turf. Morgan State looks like they may have fell on the football at the 36-yard line on the fumble by Newman. And the Morgan State Bears get the fumble, and they'll have the football back. Can't turn the ball over to Virginia Lynchburg. You're already out, man. That's a great stick right there by Ian McBurrow, one of those four linebackers that we always talk about making great plays for this Morgan State defense. McBurrow was in on that forced fumble and got the ball back for his offense. So Morgan State has the football back. Again, much like last week, those big interceptions by Perry and Kennedy that really helped them. Here their defense comes up here and helps the team as well, getting a fumble recovery. So let's see what DeAndre, DeAndre Harris and Morgan State could do with a 7-6 lead with 9-16 to go first quarter. And the first give, a couple of yards, maybe three on that first down carry. Only a couple of yards there. And, of course, I guess when you're playing a team like a Virginia Lynchburg Dragons, your playbook is kind of wide open. They, um, you know, Johnson's a tough runner, so you probably want to establish that running game. That kind of sets up those pass plays then down the field. Yeah, you can't come in a situation like this and want to get 40 points right away. You have to take small swings at that tree, and eventually it'll fall down. So the handoff, football is on the turf, and a turnover by Morgan State. So back-to-back -back turnovers. Joshua Chase fumbles this football back to the Dragons. Wow, what a weird start to this football game. Well, you have to give the Dragons some credit right there because this was a big-time run right up the middle again, and just an excellent job defensively forcing that fumble. And you have to give head coach Bobby Rome some credit. This is a, a program with some pride. He's a great coach. I've seen him do his thing down at the FCS Bowl in a postseason All-Star game down in Daytona Beach. So I know he's a good coach, and he has his guys ready to play so far in this ball game. Manuel Coulter was the one that recovered the fumble for Coach Rome. There he is, played at the University of North Carolina, was a big-time running back. I watched some highlights of him this morning. He got the job done Absolutely. for the Tar Heels. Played in the NFL a little bit, in and out, and then went over to Russia. An interesting uh, experiment there, and... Tried to develop football in Russia and ended up here now his second season at Virginia Lynchburg for the Dragons. So a first and ten for the Dragons. Brown, here comes some pressure by Washington, and the pass is incomplete. Tended receiver was looking for Rambert, but could not find him because the pressure from Williams or Washington was coming down to get Brown. Yeah, we saw this all last game against North Carolina A&T. Um, Washington doing a great job of just getting off the corner. Malachi Washington. He does that very well. He's your classic whip linebacker, your weak side linebacker, that's, whose sole purpose is to sprint off the corner and disrupt the run play away from him and also get out to the quarterback. You look at the stats last week as far as number 10 was concerned. Washington, you know, the stats weren't there, but what he did against Carter, he was in Carter's face all day. That's why a guy like Carter, who only threw one interception going into the game, had two interceptions last week because of the pressure. Brown with the completion down to the 40-yard line. And the completion is there. Sabib, who has the 81-yard touchdown grab, has his second catch of the day. Just a short completion and a third down coming up for the Dragons. Big third down here from Oregon State as you want to get off the field. You don't want to have an offense like Virginia Lynchburg continue to build confidence. And if you're the, the Dragons, you want to try to find a nice spot over that middle of the field part of the, of the field to have some success. Third and eight. Brown, here comes some pressure. Brown is sacked. Sacked at the 30-yard line, and in comes the pressure and the big sack. Dundo, of course, Dendo, his third-and-a-half sack, or third sack of the season for Dendo. And you saw it right again off the corner. Malachi Washington, 6'2", 245. He may not get credit for the sack, but he blew up the play, which allowed Dendo to make that play and get him on the ground. 
Watching back last week in the North Carolina A&T game, you just saw how great of a game Washington had because he was in Carter's face all game last week. Wolfolk back to return the punt, but wasn't a great punt. Only a 35-yard punt, and Morgan State will have good field position with a 7-6 game with a 7-11 to go here in the first quarter. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Plenty of sun at Hughes Stadium for Senior Day. It's late Saturday in November. The Bears looking to slay a dragon. Harris going deep to Bailey, and the ball is almost intercepted. It was underthrown, looking for Bailey, but well underthrown and nearly picked off. Yeah, Bailey had about a 15-yard cushion on that defensive back right there and was able to to get by, but good job playing defensive back. That ball was severely underthrown like you spoke of, and there's no wind out here, so I don't know why that ball was underthrown. Harris just missed him, but Bailey had that guy beat by a mile. Winds could gust a little bit later on this afternoon, but right now they're calm. Running play gets into Dragon territory to the 49-yard line. I mean, if you're Dale Young, the defensive back on that play, you have to come up with that interception. They won't get any easier than that. Would have been a great opportunity for Virginia Lynchburg to turn the ball over once again in this first quarter. Parker on that carry. Third down. Morgan State's improved on third down this season. Nothing there. Tackle for a loss at midfield by the Dragons. So this Dragon defense has come to play. Well, big number 90, Andrew Austin, broke through the line of scrimmage. Finally got some penetration, and he was there as soon as the running back had that football. Just a great job defensively getting off a block and making a stop. Austin, 6'3", 295 pounds, and there you see the wind not gusting at this point. They expect the wind to possibly to gust up to about 25 miles an hour later in the afternoon, but not the case now. So you wouldn't think that would affect Harris's pass that he underthrew Bailey. It won't affect us as we're nice and cozy in the broadcast booth. That's true. Roche's punt. Fair catch called for, and the ball takes a bounce at the 10-yard line. and It'll be touched out of bounds at the 11, and that's where the Dragons will have the football. So at this point, I mean, it's a 7-6 game. This is, you know, a Lynchburg team that gives up 51 points a game, only scores 10. They have not won a game this season. Their closest chance at a victory this year was against Mississippi Valley State. They lost that game 31-23. The rest of the games were pretty much blowouts. Yeah, you saw that Mississippi Valley State game. That was the one game I watched in preparation for this broadcast, and it was a lot of the same things you're seeing now. Inspired offensive play, opportunistic defense. They took advantage of the opportunity that Valley gave them. They're trying to do that here. They did it on the opening series, but we'll see if that can continue for four quarters. So the Dragons with the football. Newman gets a yard, and that is it. Not much there for Newman. This is one thing that the Dragons cannot do. They cannot run the football. They're only averaging 44 yards a game rushing. They do a little better job exactly passing the football, averaging about 179 yards. And for a total 223 of total offense is their average in their previous eight games they've played. This is their last game of the season. They played all their games on the road. And their 13 yard line. A couple of SWAC teams and a couple of MEAC teams on their schedule. Brown throws. High and over the head of his attended receiver and over his head. A man who has the 81-yard touchdown grab and now a third down coming up for the Dragons. It's all about point of attack play when you're looking at the difference in levels. You see the same thing with the FCS to the FBS. And in this situation uh, for Virginia Lynchburg, it's about can they win up front. And we know Morgan State's defense and offensive strength is along the line of scrimmage. Penalty marker is down, our first one of the day. Number 63, half the distance to the goal, still third down. Eric Green, our official today with the call. False start on the Dragons, and I'll move them back for a longer third down. 7-6 game, Morgan State drove right down the field. Joshua Chase with a short touchdown run, and then an 81-yard pass play for the Dragons for their touchdown, and that's where we are, 7-6 with five minutes to go first quarter. Newman on the run, 
Newman up to the 15-yard line, and that's where he is stopped. And a fourth down punting situation coming up for the Dragons. That was a nice piece of running right there by Thomas Newman. Did a great job cutting to the outside and almost turned that corner to pick up the first. But you saw right there, just a nice little move right there on Ian McBorrow. And was able to loop back around Hebron and get enough yards, but not enough for the first down. But good job right there getting the punter some room to kick this Putting football away. Four, well, Gray Murray. will do the punting for the Dragons. you got to watch out for Number Bailey. Eight, He's blocked two punts West so far this season, and he gets that one up after the low snap. All folk back to receive the punt, and it was in front of him. It'll be touched down at the 45-yard line. So great field position for the Bears in a 7-6 Bears lead here with 4-12 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back with more. You're watching the MIAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Bundled up today at Hughes Stadium. Talk about hats and gloves. The Bears fine, though. He's layered. Hoping that Morgan State can get another score. Up 7-6 here in the first quarter with 4-12 to go against facing a winless Virginia Lynchburg Dragons team. The referees There's no foul for the substitution. Eric Green. All right, now we're set to go. The Dragons 90 yards of total offense in this first quarter. Morgan State 84 yards of total offense. Josh Chase takes the ball inside the 40-yard line down to the 39 for Joshua Chase from Washington, D.C. Get it at his fourth touchdown of the season, the first score of the game. But I think that's the best route of action right now, the best plan of attack for Morgan State. You can't try to get it all in one play. You can try to work your way down the field, regain control of this offense uh, with the run game. Bailey goes in motion. They try to get the football to him, and it's incomplete. So Bailey lined up in the backfield with Johnson next to Harris and then wheeled out, and they weren't able to complete that play. But as we said last week, one of the keys was to get the ball more to 13, and they did that last week, and that helped them in their upset win. Bailey had seven catches for 118 yards a week ago. Well, that was just... You kind of saw this from a mile away, and good thing that ball went forward for Morgan State. Otherwise, it would have been a fumble recovery for Virginia Lynchburg. But Morgan State can't get too cute offensively. Try to get back to basics and help yourself by running the football against this light front. Third and five. And Johnson has the first down. That moves the chains for Morgan State. There was a tough little run by Johnson. Johnson gets 12 yards on that carry. And Morgan State moving the football now. A lot of their success has been on the ground, and they have to continue to have that success if they're going to try to win this ball game. Johnson again. Johnson gets two yards. Second and eight coming up for Morgan State. When you're playing a team that you are, let's say, quote-unquote, better than on paper, you have a tendency to try to go for the jugular early in the ball game instead of just playing your game. And the ball was never snapped. There's a pet marker down. I don't know if I've seen that before. Harris was waiting for the football. It never came. Yeah, everybody else, the other 10 players moved except the center. He didn't snap the football, so maybe he was the one in the right, and everybody else was wrong. So you're telling me 10 guys were wrong and one guy was right? <laughs> he controls the ball every play. I'm So he's sure. always right. He's that's always the, that's right. That's the job I want. That's the job, right? He's always right. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can take a look at oh, it Oh, right he here. did snap the football, but it just got caught in between Offense. his Back thighs. Penalty. It's a third down. That's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation, especially with Thanksgiving rolling around. Yeah. A lot of people are going to have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So did he not realize that the quarterback was in shotgun? Yeah, that's what because he kind of put it there and, and left it there as if Harris was underneath, underneath him. That's why Harris has got to give that little pat, right? Exactly. Little, that's what, that you let him know you're there. The handoff to Chase. Chase on the outside. And not much gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. So let's take a look again at that center situation. As, uh, yeah, I think he thought that, that Harris was supposed to be under center, and he was in the shotgun. And he's pointing at the umpire. He's saying the umpire wasn't 
you know, was holding the ball and wasn't out of the way before he snapped it. So it's a cascade of problems right there. But give credit to Virginia Lynchburg's defense for playing great perimeter defense up the middles where they're vulnerable. But on the outside, they've done a great job. Third and 12. Harris with the completion to completion to Walfolk. Walfolk out of bounds, and he has the first down. So that was a great run play by Wesley Walfolk, who made the catch. The transfer student from Hampton University makes his 15th catch of the season. Good job right there, just getting the football in and turning up field and getting that hand up, trying to get him some extra yards. Walfolk with his second catch for 59 yards. Harris goes to the end zone. Touchdown! Right back to Walfolk for the touchdown for Morgan State. That was great. Wesley Walfolk in great position to come up and make that grab. Strong hand, strong post-up move. I was about to say, just great hand-eye coordination right there. The cornerback was in great position, but sometimes a great play is nullified by a greater play. And Walfolk made a great play, the greater play on that reception for the touchdown. Walfolk, the grad student, third catch of this first quarter. Seven play, 44 yard drive, took 244 off the clock. And the 17 yard touchdown, Harris to Walfolk, and the extra point is good. And Morgan State up 14 to 6, and there's a good look at Wesley Walfolk. It's a good throw right there by Harris, just going up top, and Walfolk had a nice little bit of separation. He just went up there, knew where he was on the football field, and got both feet in bounds. Would have been good on Sunday as well as today. His first touchdown of the season for Wes Wolfolk. Three catches in this first quarter, so he's been the main target for Harris. And now Morgan State with a 14-6 lead over the Dragons. Well, you see what happens when you don't press to make the big play. They ran the football well. It gave them what they wanted in the passing game from favorable looks, and then they took advantage. But when they try to go out there and just bomb out these Dragons, uh, this Dragon secondary, it didn't work. So getting back to basics, getting back to what made them who they, who they are or what they are helped them out getting down the field and getting into the end zone. Harris, eight touchdown passes now in the season. Harris, four of six for 71 yards in this first quarter. There you see the wind. The ball falls off the tee, so the wind is kicking up. Now, we were here last year for the Morgan State Howard game, yes. an evening game, and we can testify to the wind. <laughs> and the wind can really gust here at Hughes Stadium. It's a unique setup because you have a, a, almost a horseshoe, but it's open on the south end of the field, so winds can get in here and swirl a little bit. O'Shea with the kick. The Dragons will return it. On the return, get a couple of yards by Henderson. And that's where Virginia Lynchburg will have the football. I have to give a shout out to our uh, help here because we do a good job with this broadcast, but it can't be done without the help of the SID at Morgan State. Oh, yeah and Leonard Haynes, who does a fantastic job in preparing these notes and, yes. and rosters uh, for us here in the broadcast booth. So if you guys out there listening to this wonderful broadcast, as you should, Leonard is making this possible, Leonard Haynes. I enjoy the uh, communications Leonard and I have each week back and forth. We have some fun, that's for sure. We had some fun this week trying to get some information about this um, Dragon Squad. Good run there by Newman. And it is an interesting setup, and we'll tell you more about um, Virginia Lynchburg throughout the day and, you know, some of their history and, you know, how they've gotten, you know, who, who exactly who they are and, you know, who they play and that sort of thing as, the, uh, as we go on here today. Nice hit right there by number four, Simeon Gatlin, who is one of the more Big-time hitters in the conference, and this secondary, we talk about it ad nauseum with how good they are, how they match up, and how they're able to play. Uh, but they do a great job just overall defensively. You won't find many areas of concern defensively for Morgan State, in my opinion. Coach Rome said when he took this job that some people call it the worst football program in the country. That was the co that's, quote from that's Coach Rome. That involves 50 states, 51 if you want to count Puerto Rico. Wow, that's... 
It's a pretty big statement. <laughs> he was able to win a couple of games last year in his first season, unable to win any games this year. Newman on the carry there for the Dragons, and he's short of the first down. But, you know, obviously Bobby Rome has a lot of football knowledge. I mean, he was a great player at North Carolina, played in the NFL, played in other professions, went over to Russia, as we mentioned before. Um, he's in a very interesting situation. Somehow, Coach Rome was able to come up with three wins last year in his, his first opportunity. He said that was almost like a miracle. And uh, this year, struggling 0 and 8. But um, they field a team and they travel every Saturday and show up and and try to play football. Like we said, their closest chance at a win was against Mississippi Valley State. They lost that game 31-23. Brown, back to pass, has time to throw, will go deep again. And oh, off to the flexion and it's caught. Rambert with the touchdown. Can you believe that? Hit off Gray's hands, out of Gray hands, right into Rambert's hands for the touchdown. The Dragons with another long touchdown. Good things happen when you hustle. That was a hustle play right there by Johnny Rimbert, the wide receiver, just running alongside Joshua Gray. And the ball caroms off Gray's hands like you talked about right to his, and he was able to outrun everybody else to the end zone. So great things happen when you're out there wow. hustling on the football field. You can't draw it up again if you wanted to, but that's just a great job of showing effort and hustle by Virginia Lynchburg. Goes for 64 yards, Brown to Rambert. So Brown has an 81-yard touchdown and a 64-yard touchdown. Going for two. And Brown's pass is incomplete. And it's 14 to 12. But explosive <laughs> plays here by the Dragons. The 81-yard touchdown and then the 64-yard touchdown. Brown, the quarterback, fires it off of Gray's hands and then Rambert ends up with it. Rambert ends up with it and scores. Yeah, that was just a great job by number one, the quarterback, Sherman Brown, taking a hit, staying tall in the pocket and throwing the football down the field. Joshua Gray showing great effort uh, and trying to come back for the football to try to make the reception. It bounces off him as he, the defensive back was in great position, and Johnny Rimberg just hauled it in, made the reception, and got into the end zone. You saw Sherman Brown there on the sidelines. He said, hey, I'm, I'm glad we made this trip to Baltimore. <laughs> He's three of five for 146 yards and two touchdowns. What a first quarter he's having with just three seconds left here in this first quarter. It's been very entertaining in this first quarter, and I'm impressed with the amount of heart and, and resolve this Dragons football team has shown, considering they're undermanned, they're understaffed, but they came out here and competed hard right now for 15 minutes, and they are within two points in this ballgame against a very good defensive team in Morgan State. Santafer will kick it off for the Dragons. Cofield back to receive it. A short kick taken at the 29-yard line, and Bailey on the return. Bailey gets up to the 49-yard line, and that's where that's where Morgan State will have it in the second quarter. We're through one quarter. Hey, we have ourselves a game, a lot of offense. Morgan State has a 14-12 lead over the Dragons. It is the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and Senior Day. The Dragons, they've come to play. So do you like pinball? Well, that was a pinball touchdown, right? Off the hands, the face mask of Joshua Gray and in the arms of Johnny Rambert. 64-yard touchdown from Brown, and it's a 14-12 game. That was just incredible. Gatlin was there on the coverage as well on that touchdown. I mean, it, right? It hit off probably two parts of the arm and then off the face mask and then hung in the air. And then Johnny Rambert was just running by, and he's like, oh, there's a football. Yep. And caught it, kind of caught the tip in stride and went all the way in for the score. That was some play. Second down for Morgan State. Nate Harris looks to throw, fires far side, and has the completion. Bailey on the move. No, that is Wolfolk again. What? Wolfolk on the second touchdown. Wolfolk. He's the guy that's taken advantage of this senior day. The grad student, his second touchdown, 48-yard strike. It goes to Harris to Wolfolk. Well, that was just a great job by Harris, recognizing where that defensive player just sucked into the what looked like the bubble screen to Menashe Bailey. They suckered in on him, 
and you saw Wolfhog just creep straight down the sideline, and Harris was able to give a good pump fake and fire a nice, accurate pass, and Wolfhog did the rest of the work getting into the end zone. Extra point is up and no good. But what a day that Walfolk is having. Two touchdown catches for the grad student from Hampton University. And he had no touchdowns coming into this game. He has two here in this game, and it's a 20-12 Bears lead with 14-21 to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, watch the replay here. You're going to see Harris show the fake bubble screen, and then everyone from Virginia Lindsburg, just rightfully so, pulled in to Menashe Bailey to stop him. And that's when Harris did a great job in showing, uh, you know, the guy downfield, Wolfolk, was just, okay, I'm going to just continue to run. And he was wide open, threw a nice ball to where he could stop, catch it, and then get upfield. And I'm sorry, that wasn't Menashe Bailey uh, that he was faking the ball to. That was Deontay White, the other speedster out there on the perimeter. And there's a look at Wolfolk, who's having a special day. Wes, a couple of grabs today and two touchdowns on the day. Harris now with nine touchdown passes. Harris was great a week ago. And having a great game here. He's continue his hot streak. Played his best game of his career a week ago in the upset win over North Carolina A&T, and he's been solid. But today his main target has been Wolf Oak. Last week it was Bailey. Bailey had those seven catches for 118 yards, but today it's 83. Wolf Oak, the top target for Harris. Let's see what the let's see what the Dragons can do. On the return, and they'll have the football back. As Brown, three of five, are 146 yards, and two long touchdown passes. And they're uh, in the football game, 20 to 12. A lot of points here in this first half. I th thought we'd see a lot of points. I didn't know we'd see 12 points from uh, the Dragons. Yeah, and it's been two big plays. It hasn't been a consistent drive down the field. It's been two big gigantic passing plays that has gotten them these points. So, so let's see what they can do here to try to develop some type of continuity within their offense. Brown to pass. Going up top again, and no one there. The deep ball. Best chance to get that football was Trigg, the defensive player from Morgan State, is Brown overfired that one. I thought Thomas Newman ran the ball well early in the, in the quarter, the first quarter. I'd like to see him get a little bit more carries, try to have some success getting that perimeter against his defense because he was the one that set up the, the field position here with a nice return. So if I was Coach Rome, I'd find ways to get number seven to football because I think he has that speed that could really alter the angles that Morgan State takes to try to tackle him. Second down now for Virginia Lynchburg. Brown trying to set up a screen, and they have that to Newman. Newman dropped for a loss. Ian McBurrow, the MEAC Defensive Player of the Week for his 12 tackle performance a week ago, comes up and makes another TFL. And Christian T, the defensive lineman who's a freshman, uh, almost had that interception on that screen. He read that perfectly, then dropped back in the coverage and almost picked that ball off, but just a great job of concentration right there by Thomas Newman. Third down now for the Dragons. Brown. Has time, going to fire long, deep again, and has the completion. Wow. And again, that is Rambert with the grab all the way down to the 25-yard line. So Brown can throw the football. They, three long passes, all complete. They are unafraid of attacking vertically down the field against the secondary. So if you come in with the mindset of, I'm not afraid to, to test you at your strength, you're going to have some success. And they've been having a lot of success throwing deep against Morgan State today. First and 10 for the Dragons. Brown going towards the end zone and incomplete. He was looking right back to Johnny Rembert and incomplete. Irvin on the coverage. So second down and 10 coming up for the Dragons. So the Dragons not afraid to go vertical. Yeah, not at all. And, and here's the thing. They have the receivers to, to really test them uh, deep down the field because those guys track the football well. And they also do an excellent job of going up and getting the football. And that's been a big reason why they've had that success deep down the field. Second and 10. From the 25 for the Dragons working in bear territory. Here comes some pressure. Brown is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. The Bears come up. One of the guys that's you know always there is Rico Kennedy and Washington was there as well. So that is the duo. Kennedy and Washington get Brown 
down for a tackle for a loss and a sack. He's been under duress a lot in this ball game. They've gotten some hits on him, and they now finally get the sack to put him on the ground. Kennedy and Washington, the duo that have done it. Kennedy last week had that interception and a sack. Third down now for the Dragons. Washington's in the face of Brown, and the ball is intercepted. And that was the pressure of Washington. And Carl Garnes gets his first interception of the season on senior day for someone that's been great the last couple of years. Carl Garnes gets the pick of Brown. And they just threw a flag, probably a celebration penalty here. But Brown just has been throwing this football up, to be honest. If we're going to put it bluntly on the last two plays, just kind of dropping back and just firing it deep downfield and hoping for the best. And this one was just underthrown, and Carl Garnes fell off his guy and was standing right there fielding that, that ball like a punt. Carl Garnes, the senior from New Jersey, played at Camden Catholic High School, gets his first interception of the season. Now, one thing we noticed the last time the defense was off the field, and let's hear from the referee first, Eric Green. Our sportsman conduct, number two of the defense. They have the distance to the goal. First down, Morgan State. So unsportsmanlike conduct on Morgan State. One thing we noticed was Tyrone Wheatley went and talked to his defense when the defense was off the field, and he was pretty animated with the conversation to really spark his defense up. Hey, you saw him pointing at his chest like, hey, you guys got to find it deep within inside yourself to get out there and compete and make plays. You can't allow a team to go out there and have confidence. And he pointed up to the stands like, this is senior day. This is some of you guys last time putting on a football uniform. Go out there with some pride and have some success. Balls at the seven-yard line for Morgan State after that penalty, after the interception. Joshua Chase on the handoff. And it's a good first down run for Chase, who had the first touchdown of this game to start things off. Morgan State marched right down the field. Looked like they were going to have their way against the Dragons. And then, of course, the Dragons answered with an 81-yard touchdown to make it 7-6 early on in the opening minutes of this game. We're seeing a 20-12 score, second and four now for Morgan State. Play action to Chase. Harris going to go up deep. Has a man wide open. And there we go. Touchdown. It's going to be for Bailey. Not going to catch him. Bailey turned it into a second gear. But no, no. You're not going to catch Bailey. He goes for the score. Was wide open. And Bailey's eighth receiving touchdown. Or seventh receiving touchdown of the season. 86-yard strike. You saw him open up that stride around the 35-yard line. Just a nice deep ball shot right there by DeAndre Harris. Good job just running underneath him. You saw him right there open up that stride and slowly started to pull away from the defender. Wow. Bailey climbing up the charts now. Fifth. Yard. Extra point is up and good, or no good. So two missed extra points by O'Shea. But the big one to Bailey on senior day. Two seniors hooking up, Harris to Bailey for the Bears touchdown. Menashe Bailey now fifth all time in receiving yards at Morgan State. Passes more, over 1,800 career yards for Bear, Bailey and moving up the charts in receiving yards and also catches. So he is going to leave his mark here at Morgan State. Definitely an excellent, excellent career and a fantastic senior season, to be honest. Now the question for Bailey is, does he have the ability to play at the next level on Sunday? On the return is Newman. Newman still on his feet up across the 25-yard line. Down to the 26 for the Dragons. We've talked about it before, if we think Bailey can play on Sunday. Has that ability, of course, as a receiver. But, you know, I, I think another factor is someone might want him on the special teams. He has those two block punts this year, one for a safety and one for a touchdown. Yeah, I wrote about this this week in The Athletic, talking about how his ability as a special teamer could be his foot in the door then allowing the coaches to have to see his ability as a receiver. But special teams being able to play that is huge for him. 26 to 12 is our score. Penalty marker, and that'll be on the Dragons. They moved before the ball was snapped. 
False start. False start. Offense. 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 Number 74. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Five penalty. Still first down. first down. So a false start on the Dragons. We'll move them back. Wallfolk with two touchdown catches. Bailey with one and Joshua Chase with a rushing touchdown. That's the scoring for Morgan State. For the Dragons, two long touchdown passes. Their two touchdowns. Newman. Newman has some acceleration. He does, and, and that's been what I've liked about their offense. That's why I said they have to get him more involved. He's excellent. He's 5'10", 207, and he has that quickness that really changes how you take an angle to try to tackle him. The defense responded when Coach Wheatley kind of gave him an old-fashioned chewing out. <laughs> they responded with the interception by Carl Garns, and that turned into the Bailey touchdown. Let's see if the defense can... Dial it up again because Coach Wheatley was not happy at all. Newman again. It's up to the 35-yard line, and that's where he was stopped just a gain of one or two and a third down coming up for the Dragons. Sometimes that old-school tactic still works in football, man, and at the end of the day, he's right. You guys are out there playing uh, without the level of pride that we saw last week. That's what he was trying to say. That's the message, the message he was trying to get across. And we've seen an uptick in that play so far uh, since that chilling out on the sideline. He was certainly getting into him. And the Dragons running for the first down, and they, they get it. Brown, the keeper, able to get the first down. So that's a big play there for the Dragons on that third down to be able to convert and keep the ball as uh, Brown kept it himself. Yeah, it's either been a touchdown or a punt or a turnover for Virginia Lynchburg, and now we're starting to see them stack positive plays one after the other. First and 10 from the 39 for the Dragons. 9.25 to go before the half is senior day, and we'll spend some time with one of the seniors from Morgan State's parents and get their side of the story. Brown with the completion, far side. Good receiver screen and a good eight-yard pickup. Rembert with the catch. Rembert had that long touchdown on the pinball touchdown, as I'll call it. And again, there's a great positive play on first down where you pick up eight or nine yards and well-designed play. And they have some quickness out there on the perimeter, man. You talk about Rembert having some speed. We saw Gray get down the field. We've been talking about Thomas Newman running back all throughout the broadcast. So they have some talent up front is where they have to continue to compete and work hard to try to be better. Newman. Bounces outside. The inside was closed, so he bounced outside and got the first down into Morgan State territory. There's a great explanation of what you're talking about, a great illustration. I mean, Newman looked inside. Nothing was there and just bounces to the outside. That's a sign of a great running back. You're right. You hit the nail on the head. His acceleration is what makes him a difference maker. He's been a big difference maker for this offense against Morgan State so far in this game. First and 10 now in bare territory for the Dragons. Brown, plenty of time to throw, fires the deep ball, and incomplete overthrows his attended receiver by about five yards. Irving was on coverage. And again, they were looking for Rembrandt. He's been the target down the field. Second and 10 coming up for the Dragons. I thought to Irving right there, the corner, 6'2", about 180. He's a freshman. He played with great technique there. Sidelines, your friend, you're on the boundary, so don't give up inside position. Just wall that receiver off to the outside, and that's what he did. Made that a very tough throw. Second down for the Dragons. Brown, who has the two long touchdown passes today. Handoff to Newman. Newman looked like he had problems getting the football on the exchange and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it, third and long. And you're trying to run down the teeth of this Morgan State defense where they're stronger up front down the middle. And we know about those linebackers, and you're not going to get that movement up front against those big bears along that defensive line. 7.44 to go here in the second quarter with a 26-12 to 12 score, and there's an injured player on the field. And we'll step aside. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. And take a look here at the injured player. Game worked off on the trainer table, trying to get him up and going. Only a three-yard gain there and a fourth down coming up after the receiver screen by 
the Dragons, so they'll have to punt the football back to Morgan State after a pickup of four with 7.15 to go here in the second quarter, and the Bears up 26 to 12. Bailey with a touchdown catch. Walfolk has two touchdown grabs, so Harris with three touchdowns in the afternoon, and Joshua Chase with a short touchdown run, the scoring for Morgan State, and there is Warfolk, who's had a great day today. Fair catch called for at the 24-yard line. That's where Morgan State will have the football. Morgan State, things go right, have an opportunity of possibly winning three in a row, heading finishing out the season and match the win total of last season. They won four games. They look back at a game that we had on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3, a game here at home at North Carolina Central game. That was a winnable game for them. Remember the two interceptions in the red zone? They had the ball down at the one-yard line, had four chances at it, couldn't score. That was a game they could have won. That's the game where you look back and say, okay, this is where they have grown and where they had an opportunity to make a big play. Chase with a big hole all the way in the Dragon territory, right up the middle, all the way to the Dragon 48-yard line. And a huge run by Chase. All of their big runs have come right in between the A-gap. That's in between the guard and the center on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They've done a great job of just opening up holes on the interior Dragons defense. 27-yard pickup by Chase. Chase again across the 45-yard line down to the 44 for Chase. But just to build back on your point about that North Carolina Central game, so many opportunities inside the red zone that didn't pay off. And we saw them pay off last week against North Carolina a and And one in particular because DeAndre Harris, the quarterback, is playing more efficient play. And he's starting off a great day today doing the same. Johnson with the handoff. Oh, no. Come out and keeps it, makes the pass. Touchdown. Wow. Bailey again for his second grab. And how about that play by Morgan State to Bailey with his second touchdown. They faked it to Johnson and faked out everybody, but Bailey was wide open for a second touchdown grab, and it was the reverse. And how about the day that Wolfolk is throwing? Not only does he have two touchdown catches, he even throws a touchdown. Yeah, that's just a great play right there by the receiver. Wow, Wes Wolfolk with the touchdown pass to Bailey. Wolfolk's doing it all today. Why not? I mean, a senior day, uh, you're allowing your senior to go out with a bang. Uh, but I thought he did a really good job in throwing an accurate ball deep down the field. Impressive. O'Shea's missed the last two extra points, but not this one. So what a day it is for the grad student from Hampton University, Wes Wolfolk. He's catching touchdowns. He's throwing touchdowns. And Bailey has two touchdown grabs. The Bears are rolling 33-12. 11. Timeless machine. Senior day turning out to be a great day at Hughes Stadium for Morgan State. Bailey with two touchdown grabs, one from Harris and one from fellow wide receiver Wes Wolfolk. It's interesting because you look at the offense and it's been a series of big plays on both sides for, for both teams. And the one that has been able to sustain drives is the one that ultimately has the bigger lead in this ballgame in Morgan State. So it'll be up to Virginia Lynchburg to try to find ways to can stay on the field and sustain drives. Newman on the return for the Dragons. Not much there on the return. And take a look at this play. Harris, the quarterback, fakes the handoff to Johnson and then hands it off to Warfolk and then he throws a great football right to a wide open Bailey. That was beautiful. I mean, it was almost perfect to where it was too perfect for Bailey because he was like, wait a minute, this is coming. I have to really run and, and make effort for the, uh, make an effort for this. A good job by Wolf will be interested to see if he had any quarterback play in his background going back to high school. So let's see what the Dragons can do here. Down now 33-12. to 12. It was hard to believe that was a 14-12 game not that long ago, right, Emery? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's been a series of big plays for both teams. And the Dragons call timeout with 5.31 to go. Timeout, University of Lynchburg. Here in the second quarter. Second time and I thought, even though it didn't end up in points, but the last drive for Virginia Lynchburg I thought was their best drive. They got a couple of first downs. They were moving the football. And then it stalled about midway at the 50-yard line. Then they had to get rid of it and punt the ball. But 
if they can find that success again, they have an opportunity to close out this half. Well, your answer, Wes Wolfolk passed for 1,500 yards as a junior while rushing for 600 yards, and he combined for 23 touchdowns in his high school days. So, there yes, you go. There you he go. can throw a football. So now we know Wes Wolfolk, the grad student, yeah, played uh, passed for 1,500 yards in high school. So he has that quarterback ability. He passed for 2,700 yards as a senior with 29 touchdowns. So he was a high school quarterback, also a track star as a sophomore and a junior, won the indoor and outdoor state titles as a sophomore. So Wolfolk has the speed and the ability to throw the football, and of course we know he can catch it with the two touchdowns. You talk about a guy that's closing out his senior season with the bang the last two weeks you spoke of. Wolfolk has done a fantastic job. Question is, why did it take so long to, to you know, to realize his ability? You know, sometimes you just get familiar with the, the system, and it, I guess maybe take some time till you get into the groove. Hand off to Newman. Newman has the first down. Nice run again by Newman, banging to the outside. He gets out of bounds on the 10-yard pickup down to the 34-yard line. I've been impressed with their skill players, man. And Newman, Thomas Newman, the running back, has been probably the most impressive of them all. Yes, the other players have scored touchdowns and have had big plays in the passing game, but you talk about consistency, it's been Thomas Newman. 4.33 to go here in the second quarter. There's a reverse by the Dragons, and how about passing the football? Hey, if Morgan State can do it, so can the Dragons. And the completion down at the 40-yard line, Gray makes the catch, and there's some trickery by the Dragons. I tell you what, man, Virginia Lewisbury is going for broke on all of their pass attempts. Doesn't matter who's throwing the football, that ball is going to get out and it's going to go deep. You saw right there, nice job by Johnny Rimber just firing that football. He created some space for himself to give him an opportunity to get that ball off, and just a great job by the receiver working back to the ball. That was Joshua Gray going up and getting the reception. Rambert, who has the long touchdown, now with that nice throw to Gray, and the Dragons have the ball in bare territory. Newman. Carry to the 39-yard line. Just a short two-yard pickup in the second and eight coming up for the Dragons. And Rico Kennedy, one of the guys leaving the field there on the tackle. That was a good job just scraping across the second level and getting that stop because had he not made that play, Rimbert was turning that corner and had a nice little lane going down the sideline. 33 12s our score. It's been a wild first half. We've had some sports center type highlights. Last week, the Bailey handstand made its way on to uh, Sports Center. Newman on the carry there on the second down carry. Gets a couple of yards, third down coming up for the Dragons. And we might have some candidates again in this game. And it's only the second quarter. There'll, there'll be a nice folder of highlights from this game heading up to Bristol. 33-12, the Bears over the Dragons. A lot of great offensive plays here this afternoon in the final home game of the season senior day for Morgan State. Browns pass. Incomplete. Looking for Gray. Threw it sailing over the sideline. Brown took another hit. Yeah, once again, just in the pocket, just doing what he has to do to get that football out, and that's Mo Dendo, once again, big number 91, who's also been coming on strong the latter part of the season. Dendo from Amsterdam, 6'3", 275. If I see him coming, <laughs> I'm throwing the football out of bounds too. Like, I don't blame Sherman Brown, the quarterback. Brown fires incomplete through behind his receiver and was looking for his attended receiver and they turn it over on downs and Morgan State will have the football at 234 to go here in the second quarter. And another hit. You can look at Dendo's helmet and see he's been putting in a lot of work today. A lot of that white paint on his helmet right there on the front. That's the, the mark of a big time defensive lineman that's been doing his job all game day. Great day so far for for Mo Dendo, and once again, getting quick interior pressure has been a problem for Virginia Lynchburg all throughout the season, and they're getting a handful today of Dendo. Harris, time to throw. 
has the completion out of the backfield. Parker. Parker breaks a tackle, and he's into Dragon territory down to the 41-yard line. Great job by Harris to scan the field, waited and waited, and then the safety valve was Parker out of the backfield. Yeah, he wanted the touchdown, but he settled in for the nice underneath throw right there to Parker, and Parker was looked like he was down right there. And they're going to challenge that, I believe. Could be our first review of the day. See if Parker's maybe was down on that. But just a great job by Parker just catching that football and still continuing to play even though he was his knee was down. Uh, but you like the effort right there just to continue to play through because you didn't hear a whistle, and that's what you, you're taught to do. But it looks like his knee or even his, his shin was down before his knee hit the ground, and that right there was uh, the big play for uh, Morgan State. It's probably going to get called back. So we'll take a look at our review to see if he was down or not on that play. 33 to 12 is our score. Morgan, a lot of fireworks. Wesley Wolfolk has two touchdown catches, a touchdown pass. Bailey with two touchdown receptions. Harris has thrown three touchdowns today. Joshua Chase, he scored a touchdown. So a 33-point first half for Morgan State. Looking for their second straight win and their third win of the season on senior day. Final game at Hughes Stadium. They finish things up next week against Howard in the Beltway rivalry. A struggling Howard team. A game they could win, but you never know when those two rivals get together. But that would mean a lot, I would think, going into the offseason if you could put a couple of wins together. And I think that would help recruiting, too, for Coach Wheatley to say, hey, hey, we're new coaches coming in, and we you know, got things going, and we won our last three, and we're going to win a lot more in the fall. Especially when you're talking about how you won games. You just didn't win games for the sake of winning games. Your offense is starting to kick it into gear. You beat North Carolina a and and now you get to say, hey, we beat the best in the MEAC. Now we're adding you and we can continue to, to push this thing forward and build a sustainable program here in Baltimore. Don't forget the MEAC Volleyball Championships is coming up this weekend, coming up November 22nd through the 24th at Howard University at Bird Gymnasium. Howard is the four-time defending champs. The Bison and North Carolina A&T State are the class of the MEAC so far this season, but it's going to be a great tournament. Sunday's championship game will be played on ESPNU at 8 o'clock, the MEAC Volleyball Championships happening at Howard University November 22nd through the 24th. 2.05 to go before the MEAC Digital Network ESPN3 halftime show. We'll talk to a parent of one of the Morgan State seniors. It'll be an interesting aspect to hear what it's like to be a parent of of a player and what they go through is as far as a student athlete. So that'll be an interesting conversation coming up at the half here on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. So they're still looking at this play under review and to see if his knee was down or not. So 2.05, plenty of time for Morgan State to get more points on the board here in this first half, already 33. I think he was one yard short when he showed the replay and, and stopped it at the point where his knee or, or shin was down. Say so he was about one yard short. After further After review, review, the runner's knee was down on the 46 yard line. First down, Morgan State. All right, so his feet were down and Well, 33 points on the board with 2.05 to go here in this first half. You know, scoring 50 might not be out of reach for Morgan State. The last time they scored 50 or more points was in 2011. When the Bears put up 52 on North Carolina Central. Morgan might hang half a hundred today on the Dragons. We'll see. Johnson. Great run by Johnson. And he gets enough for the first down, gets it deeper into Dragon territory on the nice run by Johnson. Well, that's what we talked about, just right down the middle. Both of their guards have been doing a fantastic job. You look at Tariq Johnson, the redshirt junior, doing a great job up front in Dallas, Caporaletti. The other uh, right, the right guard, number 69, doing a great job on the interior. Chase 
loses two yards. Great job by the Dragons defense and Joshua Everett, the 6'3", 275 player, makes the big stop and the tackle for a loss. Yeah, if you're going to stop the run against Morgan State, you have to win your one-on-one -on -one battles. And Josiah Everett right there did a great job beating his guy one-on-one, -on -one, making that stop in the back for a loss. 105 to go here in the first half, second and 11. And running room for Johnson gets enough for a first down and much more. 17 yard pickup by Johnson. And Johnson puts together a couple of back to back nice runs for Johnson. Not to sound like a broken record, but that ball came right down the A gap. That interior offensive line is doing tremendous work up front. Johnson again spins. Great first down run by Johnson. Seven yard pickup. So right now, Johnson with the hot hand. Yeah, in games like this, you're getting everyone involved. Johnson is a freshman. You're getting a lot of your freshmen some reps here and taking advantage of an opportunity to get them some playing time, which is going to be critical for your building process. Moving the game clock to 30 seconds. There's a timeout on the field with 28 seconds to go before our halftime show. And this is where the depth is starting to take effect on Virginia Lynchburg. And Morgan State has a ton of depth, especially in certain positions. And you're starting to see them utilize that in the series. Guess who we're going to have coming up at halftime? Who we got? We're going to have Nacho's mom. Nacho Menashe Bailey. Menashe Bailey's mom. We'll talk to her, and I'm looking forward to that. He's a construction management major and played all four years and of course has two touchdowns here today is now fifth all time on Morgan State's uh, receiving list so if you want to hear from Nashe Bailey's mom that's coming up at halftime I'm looking forward to that that'll be our halftime guest here on the MEAC digital network and ESPN 3 halftime show here's coach Aviron former North Carolina fullback Team down 33 to 12, 30 seconds to go before the half. Harris, three touchdown passes in this first half. Could he add a fourth? Plenty of time for Harris. Now here comes pressure, and he's sacked for the second time today. So Harris sacked for the second time in this first half. And Lee makes the sack. That's his second sack of the season. Lee coming from the defensive tackle spot to sack Harris. Yeah, who made that play was number 90, Andrew Austin on the outside because he had Johnson in the flat, the running back. He wanted to go there, but you saw Austin use that 6'3", 295-pound body to get in the way and shield him from that option, and therefore he had to hold the football, which allowed his, his teammate to get there and get the sack. Take a look at it here. You mentioned number 90. Austin jumps up, and then coming in to make the sack is Lee, number 8. So that's how you team it up and get it done. That's called team defense, team meeting at the quarterback. Great job by Austin. If you can't get back there to the QB, get your hands up or get yourself in the way of a passing window. And he took away the quick window, which forced Harris to hold that football and ultimately got the sack. The champion will be raised at the 2019 Celebration Bowl. The champs of the MEAC and the SWAC will meet at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia on Sunday, December 21st. The game will be broadcast live on ABC starting at noon. Visit thecelebrationbowl.com for more information. DeAndre Harris looking downfield and looking for white and incomplete. First target at white today. He's another senior wide receiver, a grad student. They have a lot of players to replace in the wide receiver core for Morgan State. You know, you have you know Bailey and Walfolk and White, all those guys, and Robinson, all seniors. That was a great throw because he threw that football low to protect White on that play. White has to make that reception. I thought that was a fantastic throw, a placement throw by DeAndre Harris. 34-yard field goal attempt for Nick O'Shea. He's 11 of 14 on field goals, has missed two extra points here today. Let's see how Nick O'Shea can do. Last week had a 22-yard field goal. Yard field goal, and this 34-yarder is up and good for Nick O'Shea, and that adds to the Morgan State lead with 11 seconds to go before the half. Morgan State with a 36-12 lead now over the Dragons of Virginia Lynchburg. And making a three-possession game uh, for themselves and you, you like to see the kicker get back out there and have something positive happen those two extra points I'm pretty sure are wearing on him right now but he was able to go back out there get a good field goal a nice long field goal for him 
and put points up on the board. Just a great kick right down the middle, too. Nicholas O'Shea from Detroit, Michigan, West Bloomfield High School, the sophomore. We'll have him around for the next couple of years kicking the football. It's an important thing to have in the MEAC. If you have a good kicker, that's going to be a solid weapon for you, and that's what Coach Wheatley will have the next couple of years. Well, we talked about that last week with a &T's kicker and how valuable that was because you're, you're setting yourself up for automatically three points if you're able to get inside the 40-yard line because of your kicking game. So having good kickers, like you talked about, is huge, especially in this conference. So O'Shea will kick it away with a 36-12 lead for Morgan State. Rambert back to receive the punt for the Dragons. Rambert will take it from the seven-yard line, and here's his return. Makes a man miss, still on his feet. Good return. A penalty marker comes in as he gets across the 35-yard line to the 36. So a 27-yard return, but there's no time left on the clock, but there is a penalty marker down on the return. We'll have to wait for the call from our referee today, Eric Green. So there is an injured player for the Dragons on the opposite side. We'll have to wait to see what the penalty is about with no time on the clock. It's number 85, Jerry Sandifer, the receiver getting help off the field. Coming up at the half, we'll talk to Ashe Bailey's mom. Can't wait to hear from her and get that side of the story from a mom's view. She's been in the stands all three years return. watching Personal Bailey. foul, Personal foul. legal blindside block. On a return to receiving team. Be half the distance to the goal. First down. First down. First down. Please reset the game clock to three seconds. Time will come back on the clock. And we'll have one more play. Coach Wheatley who was not happy with his defense because at one time this was a 14-12 game. It was a 7-6 game. It was close for a little while. And Coach Wheatley certainly had that, had that chewing out talk to his defense. And if you're Morgan State here, you can't allow anything cheap. You don't know if they're going to take a knee or try to get something deep, but it looks like they're going to get to that nail formation and going to have. But you never know with Virginia Lynchburg. That's right. They have two long touchdowns. Their two touchdowns in this game were long ones from Brown, but he takes the knee. And we are at the half on senior day here at Morgan State. The Bears take a 36-12 lead into the locker room. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Coming up, the halftime show. We'll talk to that guy's mother on the way. The new 911. Timeless machine. 16 Morgan State seniors competing in their last home game as collegiate student athletes. It's senior day at Hughes Stadium. The senior class of the Bears wanting to go out with a big win. And it looks like that could be the case. Up 36 to 12 on Virginia Lynchburg. We're at the half, the MEAC Digital Network halftime show on ESPN3, and I am joined by Minasha Bailey's mother. This is a great. We this is exciting. I'll tell you what. So he has played for four years here. Um, you've been to the, the all these games, watching him in the stands. What has it been like for you as as a mother to watch your son out there perform uh, every Saturday? It's been exciting. It's um, bittersweet today because I know this is his last um, time playing in a college game, mm -hmm. but it's been real, been real sweet. What was it like when he was thinking about where to go to college, making that jump? Your little boy growed up, mm -hmm. you know, there he is in high school, and then he's going to go off to college. You know, you take that away for any parent, mm -hmm. you know, if they're a football player or not. What was it like for you when he chose Morgan and, and Morgan was the place where he was going to go? What, what was your feeling at that point when you, when you moved him in and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and said, okay, good luck? Um, I was excited, but I was like, my little boy is going off to college now. He's about to become a grown man, and I had to get used to not having him around the house. So, you know, but I was still able to come down here to see him. 
and that's exciting. And one thing that uh, we noticed right away, uh, first of all, he has the players gave him a nickname of uh, Nacho, and now mm-hmm. have his name. Are we saying it right? Is Menashe? Are we are we close? You said close now. It's Menashe. Menashe. Yes. Okay, there we go. Menashe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, last week he had that great catch, yes. the handstand. Uh, got on ESPN, one mm-hmm. of the top plays. <laughs> did you talk to him about that play? I was like, what was you thinking? <laughs> like, where did that come from? But he was like, Mom, I just make sure I didn't want to fall on my face. Yeah. He is a, he is a constraint. Take a look at it. Here, here's a look at the handstand. So from Mom's point of view, what were you thinking? Of course, you were very excited. And then here it is, Mom. That's, uh, wow. That's that's pretty neat, huh? Pretty impressive. And had the ball in his hand. <laughs> that is wow. that, that is that is some play right there. Now mm-hmm. I know that he has aspirations of uh, maybe playing on Sundays and playing in the NFL. Was that something that he talked about when he was younger? Is it was always one of his dreams to maybe get a chance to play in the next level? Um, he played a lot of sports, but basketball was one of the things that we thought that he was going to pursue. But then later on, he was like, "Mom, I think I'm going to play football." Yeah, I understand that. Really, basketball was his main yes. sport. And then I guess it was his sophomore year in high school. I think one of his current teammates was the one that talked yes. him into playing some football, right? Yes. How about that? Or he would have never played. Um, what, what's it like, uh, the difference between watching him play basketball and now and football? Football is a little more of a, a brutal sport in yes. a way. It's probably tougher for mom to watch yes, on the, on the, on the, on the, in the stands, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, basketball was a little bit easy to watch, but sometimes in football I kind of cringe. But I know he's excited once he get out there and he start playing. He said, Mom, don't worry about it. I got this. What has been like to be part of now the Morgan family, to get to know the other parents of the other players? Mm-hmm. And, of course, you guys have, have seen each other every Saturday in the fall. You get yes. to know some of the other family members. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's that experience been like? It's fun because you become a family once you sit out here in the cold and the heat and the <laughs> warm. Right, so yep. everybody kind of sit around and talk and get to know each other. So it's kind of fun. And as far as the, the future, if the you know NFL obviously is the goal, and hopefully that works out for yes. him. But I know he's, he's very into uh, – you know, owning his own construction company. Yes. That's something that he really uh, yes. inspires to do. Yes, he's looking forward to doing something like that. And plus he have a brother that's here doing um, engineering. So they figure as brothers they can come together and own their own construction company. Menashe Bailey's mom. Here she is. Give her some fame. We're glad you so glad so much that you were Thank able to you. join us and talk about the experience. It is senior day at Morgan State University, and the Bears are rolling 36-12. to 12. You're watching ESPN3. world's never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine the magnificent marching machine getting ready for a trip to new york city for their debut appearance in the macy's thanksgiving day parade coming up shortly entertaining the crowd here at the half at Hughes Stadium with the Bears up 36 to 12. Let's take a look at MEAC scores from out of town today and some interesting scores to look at. Of course the big game in the MEAC today, Bethune Cookman and North Carolina A&T, the two teams fighting for that top spot. North Carolina A&T up 20 to 10 at the half. How about Delaware State? Their upset win over Bethune Cookman last week and they're leading Norfolk State 10-0 looking for their second straight win and it's South Carolina State 7, North Carolina Central 0 in the first quarter. Those are your scores around the MEAC. Howard and FAMU, they play at 4 o'clock. More of the halftime show coming up from Baltimore, Maryland. Morgan State with a 22-point second quarter, and they lead it 36-12 over Virginia Lynchburg. Here at the half, let's take a look at the first half highlights, and there was a lot of them. Very entertaining game in the first half, and here we go. Virginia Lynchburg, they were down 7-0, and how about this long touchdown pass? It goes for 81 yards, Brown to Sidby for the touchdown, and it was 7-6. Then Harris, 17-yard touchdown pass to West Walfolk. Seven-play, 44-yard drive. It was 14-6. And then here comes the turnovers. Joshua Chase with a fumble. Picked up by the Dragons. And the Dragons, they turn the football right back. But after this play, oh, what a catch this was. The touchdown by Rembrandt. The deflection play. And here comes Morgan State. West Walfolk with the touchdown. The score there from 48 yards, it was 20 to 12. And then Carl Garnes comes up with this interception for Morgan State. 
and Morgan State would make the Dragons pay. Harris finds Bailey wide open. This one goes for 87 yards and the touchdown. And they weren't done. Wolfolk this time throws the football to Bailey, the 44-yard touchdown. And we're at the half. Morgan State up 36-12 to on ESPN3. We'll be back with more of the halftime show when we get back. Blissful state of dumbness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? Let's take a look at the MEAC standings. Just two weeks left in the regular season before we get ready for the Celebration Bowl. And two teams fighting it out to find out who will go to the Celebration Bowl to represent the MEAC. North Carolina A&T and Bethune-Cookman, both 4-2, uh, and two, and South Carolina State in there as well. Of course, FAMU, they might run the table undefeated, but they're not eligible. Emery, your thoughts on who will represent the MEAC in the Celebration Bowl this year? I still think South Carolina State is a team that, that no one wants to play that has an opportunity. We know A&T and Bethune-Cookman are playing right now. Bethune-Cookman is down by 10. And South Carolina State is one of those teams that has a really good defense. They can throw the football now along with their run game, and their offensive line has a senior bowl participant as well. So they are a great setup and in great position to make a claim for that title. I think they'll get it at the end. It should be fun. Of course, the Celebration Bowl is coming up in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Saturday, December 21st. Uh, the game will be broadcast live on ABC starting at 12 o'clock. You can visit thecelebrationbowl.com for more information. We're getting ready for the second half. The Bears up 36-12, to looking to win back-to-back -back games in their third game of the season. Some big numbers. Harris, 7 of 10, 216 yards and three touchdown passes. Bailey, three catches, 126 yards, and two touchdowns. Wes Wolfolk, four catches, 124 yards, two touchdown catches, and he's one for one throwing the football for a touchdown. So the big numbers there for the other side for the Dragons. Brown, the quarterback, 7 of 13, intercepted once, 197 yards passing, and two touchdowns and receiving. Rembert has three catches for 113 yards and a touchdown, and Sidby has three catches for 85 yards. He had that 81-yard touchdown. So the two first-quarter touchdowns, both long pass plays for the Dragons. They're scoring here today, and Morgan State had a big, huge second quarter of 22 points and have this big lead here as we start the second half. The Dragons won the toss and deferred, and we'll have the football here to start the second half. A 36-12 game, and we're underway here in the second half on senior day at Hughes Stadium. Ball taken at the 10-yard line. The return across the 20. Newman on the return. Gets across to the 22-yard line, and that's where... The Dragons will have the football. So what do you think that uh, Bobby Rome told his team at the half? Number one, he probably told them just to keep battling out there. They're doing a great job of competing, and that's the one thing you can't coach is a person's competition level. And so they're out there competing. Second, just make sure they sustain drives. If they can sustain the drive, they can move this football against Morgan State. They've shown that at times, whether it be the big play or with their run game, and on defense, it's all about them winning up front. If they can win up front, I know it's hard to do. They may have to gamble a little bit in blitz. They can stop the run, put a lot of pressure on Morgan State. The Dragons part of the National Christian College Athletic Association. They are not eligible to join the NCAA or the NAIA due to insignificant academic programs, accreditation programs. So uh, that's where they play, the National Christian College Athletic Association. And at one time, this school was called Virginia, Sem Virginia Seminary uh, and College, and they actually played here at Morgan in 1930 and 1931 under the Morgan legendary head coach Edward P. Hurt, and the Bears won both matchups 18-0 and 25-0 all the way back in 1930. So uh, Virginia Lynchburg, the oldest school in higher uh, learning in Lynchburg, the school was founded in 1886. And that's the story of... Uh, Virginia University of Lynchburg, a very small, private, historically black college in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains alongside the banks of the James River. Third down coming up for the Dragons. Well, they're going to be talking about those 
two touchdowns that they had, uh, you know, no matter what the outcome of the second half is going to be, because those those were pretty, pretty exciting <laughs> touchdowns. Here comes the pressure on Brown. Looks down the field, throws, and had a wide open wide receiver and overshot. It would have been a first down. Looked like he had Williams wide open. Yeah, he did. And that was just a great job right there by Sherman Brown buying time and keeping his eyes downfield. And that was a huge play waiting to happen. He just missed Rico Williams, who was running wide open in that zone, did a great job working himself open. Those are the plays that if you're Virginia Lynchburg, you can't avoid. You can't afford to miss. That was a big play waiting to happen to help keep them on the field. Low punt, and Morgan State's going to have great field position on that short punt. They'll have the football at the 44-yard line. It's been an explosive first half, 399 total yards, so almost 400 yards of total offense for Morgan State in that first half. Yeah, and if you're Morgan State, you saw you had success with the run game. Joshua Chase had 77 yards in the first half. Johnson had 67 yards in the first half, so the run game is probably where you want to go and then go back to working your passing game. You know your passing game has had success. I think running the football should be the order here for Morgan State. Morgan State only averaging 279 yards of total offense. That's ninth in the MEAC, and Joshua Chase with the carry across the 40-yard line, down to the 39-yard line, and again, they have 399 in the first half, and they only averaged 279 for a whole game. So their uh, offense is working for them against a 0-8 team. Chase with the handoff. Gets a couple of yards. He had 77 yards rushing in that first half. And Austin's the one. And wraps up Chase. Two blocks to get to Chase in that on that one. So just a great job against the run. We saw him in the first half have a big play in the passing game as well. Harris will throw. Going up deep to Bailey. Bailey, make it three. Three touchdowns on the day for Bailey. Wide open, touchdown Morgan State. What an afternoon Bailey is having. We talked to his mom, and that'll put a smile on mom's face. Bailey's third touchdown of the game. And I thought it was awesome because that ball looked like it could have been for Wolfhawk as well, but great job by DeAndre Harris taking a shot in the pocket and just a perfect throw down the sideline to Menashe Bailey who waltzes into the end zone. Nick O'Shea will come on with the extra point. O'Shea's extra point is up and good. Nashe Bailey has 10 receiving touchdowns on the season. There's his third of the game. It's all Bears. You've got your back 24-7. Nashe Bailey previously had two receiving touchdowns against Army. He has three today. His most yards in a game was against James Madison, 172 yards in that game. He's closing in on that. He has 166, four catches, and three touchdowns. That's not a bad day for Mr. Bailey. You have four receptions, three of them go for scores. Pretty efficient day for him in the passing game, I must say. And Harris has been great as well as the quarterback, 8 of 11 for 256 and four touchdowns. Good return there by the Dragons all the way up to the 40-yard line. Newman on the return. And there's a guy that I'm impressed with, uh, Newman. You mentioned it numerous times in that first half and how you like his running style. But there he is on special teams. He's a guy that's going to be out there and the, the Dragons want him to have the football as much as possible. Yeah, he's their starting tailback and also their starting kickoff returner. And you see why, because when the football is in his hands, great things tend to happen. You saw him set up his offense right now on a minus 40, but they're 60 yards away from a touchdown, now he's back there dotting the eye in that backfield. So great player right now for Virginia Lynchburg. 278 yards of total offense for the Dragons in this one. Brown fires, going deep, has a man wide open, comes back to make the catch, and there's a penalty marker down, and that was Gray, Joshua Gray coming back to make the catch, and there's penalty marker down, so we'll have to see how this all plays out. Gray was the one who made the grab. And again, the ability to throw the ball vertically downfield is Dragons have done it numerous times today. Pass interference, defense, defense. Number, 29. number 29. That penalty's declined. First down. 
So Maddox the third, the penalty on Maddox, and the penalty, of course, will be declined, and another big pass play for Brown. I didn't too much see where the pass, and maybe right there, but I felt like Maddox panic right there. He was in great position to make a play on the ball, but he just started to get grabby. This is another big play in the passing game by Virginia Lynchburg. That one for 44 yards. Here's Newman. Newman down towards the goal line. And did he lose the football? Morgan State has the football now. Newman fumbled it. And here comes the Bears the opposite way down the far sideline. They still have the football down to the 45-yard line. So Newman had it down to the one and then lost the football. And it was picked up and a big return at the goal line as Richardson, the linebacker, was the one that ended up with the football and had the return for the Bears. Yeah, you're going to see right there that knee looks down. So this one will probably come back. But just a great job just hustling. And even if the knee is down, you like how number 54, the linebacker, was able just to pick the ball up and just continue to run, continue to play. That's Lawrence Richardson, the freshman, because you never know. You don't want to leave it up to chance for the refs to make that play or to make that decision. You take the ball and you, you run it back the other way and make the refs make a call. Well, I see the replay official over here is hitting his red button trying to stop play. And, of course, Morgan State's trying to get to the line of scrimmage to get the play off. So they're going to look at it. And I think you're right. I think that Newman's going to be marked down right there at the two- or three-yard line. Yeah, and that was just a great run by Newman. We just spoke about him. A few plays ago, and you saw him just cut back against the grain, found a big hold on the left side, that defensive line, and was steamrolling toward the end zone. Now, you like how Morgan State's defense was able to follow up and, and try to force a fumble, but just a great piece of running right there by Thomas Newman. Like you said, I'm very impressed with his game as well. So the play is under review. And, and with the luxury of review, it's beneficial for the refs to allow a play to just to continue to happen because you can always go back and review it. As college football celebrates its 150th year, the MEAC is proud to document and showcase some of the legendary coaches throughout the history of black college football, highlighting such greats as Billy Hayes and Billy Joel and Rod Broadway and others. Visit MEACsports.com and the MEAC's YouTube channel to watch these interviews as we celebrate 150 years of college football. We have a play under review if it was a fumble or not by Newman and then of course the return by Richardson all the way out to the 47 yard line but I think the ball is going to be placed with the Dragons having the football at the three yard line. So Morgan State next week will go to Howard. The opportunity to win three in a row and have the fourth win of the season under Coach Wheatley's first year. Coach Wheatley, the fifth head coach in the last seven years. Can they get that, you know, what they want as far as someone, you know, putting the flag down and saying this is going to be. There was a great article in the Detroit newspaper of last week that Coach Wheatley said, hey, Morgan is my Michigan. I want to I want to develop a football program here. And and um, can that happen? That's the question. Yeah, it can happen because this is a very good program that has a lot of positive things in place. After further review, the runner's knee was down at the two-yard line. Second down. Let's There is Eric Green with our call, our official today. So they said that Newman was down at the two-yard line, so they will have the football there. Looking for their third touchdown of this game. It two long touchdown passes, and there's a coach, uh, a look at Coach Wheatley. I thought that was a great article. You know, not only do you have Coach Wheatley there, but you have Carr, um, one of his uh, teammates at Michigan, and of course another uh, teammate as well in Derek Alexander, who are both on his staff and here at Morgan, and they want to make Morgan their Michigan. Derek Alexander was a great football player. Yes, he was. Of course, people in this town know him uh, as a Baltimore Raven, premier wideout for the Ravens. He posted back-to-back 1,000-yard -back receiving years for the Ravens and was part of the franchise's first big win for the Ravens back in 96 against the Steelers. A lot of people are excited about the Ravens with the way they're playing. 
They're home tomorrow here in Baltimore against the Houston Texans in a big game, and a lot of people are excited about the offense for the Ravens. That game should have been flexed to Sunday night because that is must-see TV. The last time we saw Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson on the football field together, it was a fantastic game between Clemson and Louisville. And you're looking at two quarterbacks that are a little different than the typical quarterback in the NFL that have a little different skill set than than most. They make it an 11-on-11 game, which just makes the game more entertaining, and it also makes it challenging for the defense. So I'll be interested to see what both defensive coordinators can draw up tomorrow to slow down each other's quarterback. So a first and goal for the Dragons after they said that Newman was down. Dragons trying to get their second touchdown, and there's a review. Maybe they're checking to see where the ball should be spotted. So we're still under review here. Hey, basketball has started, and tickets to the 2020 MEAC basketball tournament March 10th through the 14th at the Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, are now on sale at MEAC member institution, ticket offices, ticket master outlets, and the MEAC office by calling 757-951-2055. Of course, you can visit us at MEACHOOPS.com for more information. MEAC basketball tournament, March 10th through the 14th at the Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. First and goal for the Dragons, looking for their first score since the first quarter. 11.23 11.23 to go here in the third quarter. Let's see what Sherman Brown can do. He has two touchdown passes. Could the Dragons get their first rushing touchdown, believe it or not, of the season? All their touchdowns this season have been receiving touchdowns. They have not had a rushing touchdown in their eight games that they have played this year. Judging by how they throw the football, I can understand why that is. They go deep. They work touchdown to check down the passing game. So let's see if they can get their first rushing touchdown of the year, or will they try to do it through the air? That's where all their previous 10 touchdowns coming into this game have come, through the air. The handoff to Newman. Newman is stopped right at the line of scrimmage, and that is it. And big number 91, who's having a great game there again. A lot of big guys to run into. Dendo, I mean, he, he he's played great. Hasn't he Hasn't he gotten better as the season is? There you see the progression, right, from the beginning of the year until where, where he is now. He's a different player than he was at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. He's become one of their, their stalwart defenders up front that they can count on game in, game out to make a play. They were looking for a play at that defensive line, trying different guys. Guys like Garrett, who was originally an offensive lineman, now on the defensive line. And Brown's pass, incomplete. Fires that one, looking Brown for Rembrandt, and he was unable to come down with that one. Brown had to get rid of it quickly. There's an opportunity here for Brown and Newman to get the first rushing touchdown of the season for Virginia Lynchburg because what you're seeing and how they are aligned, you have the last man on the line of scrimmage on the left side for Morgan State. So there's a speed option opportunity for them if they want to run it, but now they have two guys in the backfield, so we'll see what they call. Third and goal. They send a man in motion. Straight ahead, nothing. Going to be short, a fourth and goal coming up. And again, they struggle to get these rushing touchdowns, and they're running into the teeth. And again, to Dendo is one of the guys. His handoff goes to Davis. Davis really, I think, because he didn't get the, get the ball exchanged cleanly. Yeah, because you're not going to move these guys off the spot up front. That's a, a no-win situation. That's why I said going outside on the speed option, it's just you, the back, and the linebacker gives yourself an opportunity. So Davis in the backfield along with Newman in the I formation. Let's see what Brown can do under center. Fumbles the snap. The ball's on the ground, and Morgan State might have fell on that one. And, of course, it doesn't matter because it's turnover on downs anyway. But the center exchange, Brown couldn't hold on to it, and they turn it over on downs. Well, you have to ask yourself, how often are they under center? And you talk about a predominantly shotgun offense now being asked to go into center on a crucial fourth and short inside the one-yard line, and this is what happens. You fumble the snap, and the lineman kicked it back even further. So that's another situation where they try to get too cute 
inside the one yard line. Go speed option, go to the perimeter. You're not gonna break them inside the middle of that defense. Try to go outside, give yourself a chance. That didn't happen, and now they turn the ball over on downs. Coach Rome needs a visit from the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt, <laughs> to fix these problems to be able to, to you know, have a rushing touchdown. Because Morgan State was selling out all on the interior throughout that series inside the five. Chase across the 10 yard line and he picks up nine yards and a second and one coming up on a nine yard carry by Chase. Chase now 90 yards approaching 100 on the day. If you can give a game ball, you saw big number 76 right there for Morgan State. Allen Owens Jr., the freshman, 6'6", 360, just plowing his man, turning his defensive lineman into a safety by how far he drove him down the field. They gave him 10 and a first down, so a 10-yard pickup. Harris, here comes pressure, fires it. And incomplete, had to throw it away. He had some serious pressure coming out of him. Sidestepped one. Dragon that would have had him for a sack and was able to throw it away. Well, that's the gimme down that you talk about where it was second in uh, first and 10, so why not take a shot? And so you see right there that freshman I was talking about, Allen Jones, with a huge block on that previous run that went for a first. So they're getting a lot of freshmen involved. They have some size and depth. And to your point, Phil, this program can be sustainable because they're getting the right type of players in. And the give there. Of course, Chase had 124 yards. That was his season best against Bethune Cookman this year. That was a great play right there by Andrew Austin, big number 90. That's the third time we've called his name. He chased down his run play from the backside, getting over block once again and bringing him down at the line of scrimmage. Joshua Chase had those back to back 100 yards games against Bethune Cookman and then their first win of the season against Delaware State. But he's struggled the rest of the time, not today. Completion there by Harris for Cofield. Cofield with the grab and a first down for Morgan State. And Cofield is another one of these guys that we've seen over the course of the season become more and more involved in the offense. Now, he's not having the day today because of what Bailey and Wolfolk were doing in the passing game, but he's had his success this season. And he's only a sophomore, so Cofield, who started just on the special team side, it wasn't until a couple of games into the season where he developed himself as a, one of those wide receiver guys. But we mentioned already with Bailey, Walfolk, and White, and Robinson, all those guys going, they're all seniors in the wide receiver core, so a guy like Cofield's going to be key next year. Johnson doesn't get much there, maybe a yard, and that's it. Second and nine coming up for Morgan State after the short Johnson run. Yeah, and that, that's a situation, and that's how you build depth within your roster. You get guys some reps while trying to win football games. And so I like what Coach Wheatley has done with his program. That's why you're starting to see them turn the corner a little bit toward the back end of the season. Second and nine. 469 yards of total offense today for Morgan State. The give to Johnson. Johnson. To the 35-yard line, close to the first down marker, but it'll be just short, so it'll be a third and short. Morgan State, four of seven on third downs. That's an area they improved, and they improved on third downs this year. They also improved on penalties. They're third in the league for fewest penalties of only averaging 62 yards of penalty. So Coach Wheatley corrected those two areas, and they were very important areas that needed to be corrected. Yeah, they're tracking in the right direction, if you ask me. The only area that hasn't been cleaned up is that turnover ratio. They're minus 15. Too many interceptions, too many fumbles. And we saw two today, two bizarre fumbles that the ball just came squirting out of usually sure-handed tailbacks. Joshua Chase gets the first down, and he goes over 100 yards on the day. So his third game uh, this season that he's gone over 100 yards. And there's an injured player, and I think it might have been Chase. And we will step aside with 6.47 to go in the third quarter. And Joshua Chase, who has 100 yards rushing today and a touchdown as our injured player, will be right back. Timeless machine. Joshua Chase is 14th carry, 100 yards rushing. And here's the injury to the senior Joshua Chase on that play. So three games this season, 100 yards rushing. Johnson on the carry, replacing the injured Chase. So Chase, 14 carries, 100 yards, 7-yard an average as the touchdown. 
Joshua Chase set a school record in high school in triple jump indoors as a 10th grade. Was an outstanding track and field athlete besides uh, his football premise at over 3,000 rushing yards in his prep career and scored 37 touchdowns as a high school player. Harris going deep. Coming back to make the catch. What a great play by White. Did he come down with it? Yes, he did. Wow. White waited for it and then made a move to adjust to make the catch. And that was just a straight shot play right there by DeAndre Harris because he had Wolf running open on the low crosser after play action, but he wanted to take a shot, went up to Deontay White, and White went up top to pull it down. That was a great catch by White. Went for 40 yards. Harris going for the end zone and incomplete. And he was looking for Robinson. Incomplete there. I like where Harris put that football, though. He put it out toward the back pylon to where he allowed his receiver a chance to run underneath it. Maybe put it a little bit too far, but I love the placement where he wanted to, to throw that football. That's how you see a guy that's just making some growth, some necessary growth in his in his progressions as a quarterback. It's unfortunate that he's a senior because he's starting to turn it on uh, toward the back end of the, the season. And the handoff straight up. Parker. Parker down to the six-yard line. So Parker, Parker Johnson, they're the future of the running game. And they're both smaller guys. And you saw that gaping hole right there for him to run through. And that's a winning situation in my opinion. You have these big, burly offensive linemen almost built like bears. And these smaller running backs like little cubs running behind those big guys. By the time the defenders see them, it's too late. What a day Harris is having. 306 yards, four touchdowns, 10 of 15. The Bears looking to score 50 points for the first time since 2011. Harris fires to the end zone. Oh, had a wide open Bailey. Would have been his fourth touchdown grab, but Harris, little much on that one. Okay, he put a little bit too far out on that football, but did a great job in working back across the field to find a wide open Menashe Bailey just a bit outside. That would have been Bailey's fourth touchdown. Bailey four catches, 166 yards here today. And that would have been Harris's fifth touchdown pass of the day. We made the statement a bunch last week saying that Harris played his best game of his career last week in the A&T upset. And he's following it up with another great performance today. Second and goal for the Bears. Parker with the handoff. Inside to the four-yard line. So a third and goal coming up for Morgan State. Again, the last time they scored 50 was in 2011. They put up 52 points against North Carolina Central. Last time they scored 60 points or more. You have to go back to 1967 against Delaware State. They lit up the scoreboard that day for 69 points. Nice. When you look at what they do, it is funny to think that they went that long without scoring 60 points, but where they separate their offense from everyone else, they run heavy and they run often. Harris, pressure, sack. Harris has been sacked three times now. And there's a big one by Austin. Austin's been trouble, right? Big he, number 90 has been trouble. He's doing a great job of staying relentless, and that's the only thing that you can't coach. You can't teach heart, you can't teach want to, and you can't coach effort. He has all three. He's having himself a very good game today against Morgan State. 12 of 15 is Nick O'Shea, and he'll have another field goal opportunity. O'Shea looking for his second field goal. Has a 34-yarder already today. And this is a 25-yarder for Nick O'Shea. 12 of 15 on field goals this season. And the kick is good for Nick O'Shea. So two field goals, one from 34 yards, that one from 24 yards. And Morgan State has a big lead over the Dragons. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. <laughs> Five hundred and thirty-four yards of total offense. The last time 
Morgan State had more than 500 yards of total offense last year against Norfolk State. They had 504 yards of total offense. Last time they've gone over the 600-yard mark, you'd have to go back to 2004 against South Carolina State. That day, 625 yards of total offense. Right now they're at 534 yards of total offense. Nick O'Shea who has two field goals with the kickoff on the return for the Dragons. So O'Shea's 25-yard field goal was a 15-play, 90-yard drive. It took 6.49 off the clock that ended in the Nick O'Shea 25-yard field goal. So this is a game where a lot of records could be broke. You're playing a, a Virginia Lynchburg Dragon team who's not affiliated with the NCAA. Uh, so they're not in the division. They're not a Division Three team or a Division Two team. Um, they're kind of one of those independents that travel around and play uh, some of the teams that they've played this year. Uh, Davidson, Savannah State, West Florida, Mississippi Valley State, Perry View, Hampton, Southern, and today Morgan State. They open the season against Merrimack. Brown has the completion and the hit immediately. So a short gain on that completion. Brown has 10 completions today, 10 of 18, passing with two touchdowns. And that Rambert with the catch. That's Rambert's fourth catch of the, of the game. Forty-six to twelve is our score. Incomplete. Brown throws it to the Morgan State sideline, and I think Rambert might have Rambert might have ran into the Morgan State Bears bench. Did you see that, Emory? Yeah, when you're rolling out to the right and. You know, that play was dead about five yards before he threw the football, and that caused everyone, one, the receiver included, Rember, to run toward the sideline. And you saw him just try to break his fall and just ended up running into the bench of Morgan State, and he's still down on the ground. But try to break his fall. Well, I hope he's okay. Rambert might want to get home and see if he uh, makes Sports Center. He's the one that had that that deflection pinball catch for their second touchdown. And he's being uh, attended to on the sideline. 2.22 to go here in the third quarter. Morgan stayed up 46 to 12. And you saw, you talked about that program of Virginia Lynchburg and it's a, it's a challenge because you're playing all your games on the road. You're trying to schedule teams that, that you feel as though you have a chance to compete against. And we saw them compete well against Mississippi Valley State. We we're seeing them compete well against Morgan State. But it's going to take time for Coach Rome to get the type of program that he wants. And maybe down the line, this program can be a team that moves up into the NCAA ranks. So they have a lot of work ahead of them to make sure that happens. But I do like how this team is coming out competing today against Morgan State, considering the odds stacked against them. Looks like North Carolina A&T has bounced back from their upset loss here in Baltimore last week. They have a 33-10 lead in the fourth quarter over Bethune-Cookman. And it's been all in the second half, too. That defense has stepped up big, shutting out the Wildcats in the second quarter, I mean, third quarter. North Carolina A&T would love to go back to the Celebration Bowl. They already have a couple of Celebration Bowl victories. Brown fires downfield and incomplete. Ran out of real estate on the Morgan State sidelines. a and has a Celebration Bowl wing. How often they've been down there and won down there. Henderson was the intended receiver there for the Dragons. Absolutely. The MIAC has done well, right? They've won every one but one Quietly, no Celebration century. Bowl. Right? Yeah, this will be one. They're one and three. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, MIAC is three and one in uh, Celebration Bowl. And here's the one they lost. I was at that one against Grambling and North Carolina Central. Great throw by Malcolm Bell, scrambling out the pressure out of, out of the pocket and throwing the ball downfield. Receiver makes a great grab in the end zone, which would have put the game, uh, would have put them in position to tie the game. Took his helmet off, celebrated, Flag. Ooh. Now that pushes back the extra point, and they miss it. So he got wow. flagged for a celebration in a Celebration Bowl. Wow. Celebration Bowl is Saturday, December 21st at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information, the celebrationbowl.com. For more information and tickets, 
It's the champ of the MEAC against the champ of the SWAC. Saturday, December 21st. You can watch the game if you're not going live on ABC starting at noon. Could MEAC continue their dominance? Three and one in the in the celebration bowl. Parker, 14-yard pickup for Parker. I say go to the Celebration Bowl. You know, don't watch it on TV. Yeah, watch it on TV, but go to the game because, number one, you're going to get great football. Number two, the food in the Mercedes-Benz Dome is phenomenal. Yeah, and the best thing about that, the game's on Saturday, so the Chick-fil-A will be open. That's where I was going with See, it. See, I can read your mind. We've been, around, we've been hanging around enough the last couple of years where we can read each other's mind. Parker there on the carry. With 1.20 to go here in the third quarter. Big afternoon for Morgan State on senior day. Seniors, 16 Morgan State seniors completing in their, competing in their last home game as collegiate student athletes. They're going out in a big way. Next week, the Beltway rivalry on the road at Howard to finish the season. Have an opportunity to win three in a row and get their fourth win of the season, match last year's win total. Johnson. 13-yard pickup. You can kind of see the vision of, of Coach Tyrone Wheatley and what he envisions for his offense. Big guys up front moving away these defensive linemen so these scat backs that they have can make way, get to the second level, make a guy miss and be off to the races. So they're recruiting to a, a philosophy, and I like what they're doing. I like the direction this program is going. 184 yards they've rushed for. Johnson closing in on 100 as well. He has 80 yards rushing. Harris has the completion to Bailey. Bailey inside the 25-yard line and stopped at the 24 with just 10 Harris seconds to go here in the third quarter. There's a penalty marker down. Penalty down. And the clock runs out on the first quarter. We'll wait for the flag. Eric Green will have the call for us, our official today. During the play, holding, 76, offense, 10-yard penalty. We have one on time down. So the penalty was on Allen Jones, the offensive lineman, the right tackle. And we'll have an untimed down. Morgan State, 434 yards. Total offense. The most since last year against Norfolk State. 46 points, trying to reach the half a hundred mark. It was back in 2011 when they did that. The 52 they scored against North Carolina Central. Harris looks downfield, and he's going to run. Harris gets out of bounds, shows his speed, gets out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and we are through three quarters. The fourth quarter coming up on Senior Day here at Hughes Stadium. Morgan State having their way with the Dragons, 46-12. to 12, The fourth quarter. world's never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Fourth quarter in Charm City on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. All pairs in this one, 46 to 12. Phil Shannon alongside the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt, here as we're into the fourth quarter now. And Johnson with the carry. Johnson could close in and we could have two Morgan State running backs rush for over 100 yards. That yep. would be a first. It's been a big offensive day. Two backs could potentially be 100-yard rushers and receivers. Two of them are already over 100 yards, and your quarterback has thrown for 300 yards and four touchdowns, so a lot has been done today by the offense of Morgan State. Only if you could play Virginia Lynchburg every week. Not if you're Mississippi Valley State. You probably don't want to see these guys again. No. Johnson. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is maybe one yard, and he's going to be short. So a fourth and short coming up for the Bears. The Bears this year on fourth down, 6 of 17, 35% on fourth downs this season. 
The fourth and one from the 19 yard line. And they're going to go for it. Let's we'll see if Virginia Lynchburg can get a stop here. Defense showing some pride up front. Johnson next to Harris in the backfield. Johnson has the first down and more inside the 10-yard line. Spin move, touchdown, Morgan State. What a spin move by Johnson. Wow. He made three guys miss. That was a great piece of running right there by Jabril Johnson. Did a great job in stringing together multiple moves to find himself into the end zone. Just an outstanding display of individual talent. You're going to see right here just going to the left side. Faked the end around, making two guys miss in the hole, and then just whoop, whoop, spin, <laughs> and off to the races to the, to the end zone. I like it, right? Yeah, he had the first guy at the line of scrimmage, and then another guy about four yards out, and then he had the, the third guy that he made him miss as well on that little spin move. It's a great job just realizing where you're on the field and where your leverage lies and how to make that guy look foolish in space. O'Shea's point after is up and good. It's a great job. Just a great spin move once again. The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. A lot to cheer about. Johnson, the 19-yard touchdown run, capping a seven-play, 53-yard drive, took 3-10 off the clock. And the most points since 2011 for Morgan State, 53. It's one point better than the 52 points they put up against North Carolina Central in 2011. Dragons will get it on the return. Three-yard return, and that's where the Dragons will have the football. 597 yards now of total offense as they are approaching 600. By number 27, Kobe I got a stat for you. Morgan State is on a 39-0 to run since Coach Wheatley chewed out the defense. Yeah, I remember that chewing out. <laughs> I saw Coach Wheatley earlier. I was down at a meeting before the game. And, man. <laughs> You don't want him mad. He, he put the fear in you. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want. Well, he wasn't mad at me, but he was mad. At, he was mad at someone when I was down there, and I was. Uh, I was like, wow. The Dragons with the football. Okay, okay. offense. Play a game two. on the Dragons. That'll move them back. It's your first set. New quarterback in the ball game, number 12, Marcus Davis. It's safe to say Sherman Brown, the starting quarterback, played valiantly today. So Morgan stayed over 300 yards passing. Last time they did that was in their upset win over North Carolina A&T in 2000, or their 2017 game. 303 yards passing. And of course, they're closing in on that 600-yard total offense mark. And like I said before, the last time they did that was in 2004 when they had 625 yards of total offense against South Carolina State. So they are doing a number on the record books in this game today, up 53-12. to 12. Second down, 14. So Davis... Looking downfield, has the completion right at the sticks. It'll tend on the spot, and the spot will give him a first down. So Davis's pass, beautifully thrown, and got the completion. And the first down grab by Harriston, the wide receiver, makes the catch and moves the sticks for the Dragons. Now Davis is a unique talent because he's a left-handed passer, and that puts up a different spin on the football if you're a receiver. Davis fires, intercepted. Picked off Morgan State with the interception. Coming up with the interception for the Morgan State Bears is Lawrence Richardson. He's the one that had that fumble return that was called back because Newman's feet uh, were down. But Richardson comes up with the interception. The freshman comes up with his first interception of the season. Well, he did a great job right there in zone coverage. He dropped back and had inside position and just played that route better than the receiver did. 
and got his turnover back from the one that was called back down on the other end of the end zone. Uh, but it's a great job just dropping back in coverage. Linebackers that can cover are a valued asset in today's game in this era of the passing game. And you see why, because he's able to drop back far down the field and make a play on the ball. Richardson has an interception, so does Garn. So now eight interceptions on the season for this Morgan State defense with two of them today. And there is Cofield. Cofield has a lot of speed. Down the sidelines he goes. And he... 19-yard pickup on that play. Boy, is Cofield fast. And once he gets into, into gear, uh, he's able to, to shift gears pretty quickly. Right there, he had to put his foot in the ground and get back outside and outran an angle to the corner. Two-time 200-meter and 100-meter state champ. He was also the three-time 60-meter champ in high school at Newtown High School. When you want speed, Jordan Cofield has speed. So after that 16-yard pickup by Cofield, Bailey has it. Bailey looking for his fourth touchdown of the game. Fights his way down towards the one and give him six. Touchdown number four on the day for Menashe Bailey, the senior going out in a special way. Great job right there by Bailey. All individual effort. First the one-hand grab because Harris took a shot in the pocket. You're going to see on the replay, great job by Harris getting that football off. But one-hand catch by Bailey. You're going to see him make that guy miss and just fight through with that strength. He's 6'1", 195, and he needed all of that to get to the end zone. Bailey, five catches, 177 yards, and four touchdowns. Had Bailey's mom on at the half. She's somewhere down in the crowd smiling. It's been all Bailey today and at the half, so it's been the Bailey show. Bad snap. Harris throws. And the two-point conversion, no good. Rico Kennedy almost got two points right there. Just couldn't haul it in. So Bailey, what a day for Bailey. Five catches, 177 yards, and four touchdowns on senior day. Morgan State, 59-12 lead over the Dragons with 11.24 to go in this fourth quarter. What a day for Bailey. And this is what pro scouts want to see, you know, how – how bad do you want it? He wanted it better than the, the other guy, and we'll send it out to break when we come back with more Morgan State, Virginia Lynchburg. We proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. It's the Bailey Bunch. <laughs> Bailey, five catches, 177 yards, averaging 34 yards, a catch, and four touchdowns. I can't mess with you, Phil. Man. <laughs> you were sitting on that one the whole break. <laughs> I was ready for it. DeAndre Harris has five touchdown passes. The last time a Morgan State quarterback did that was against Delaware State in 2014. So records are being broken left and right here today. Harris, 11 of 17, 317 yards, and five TD passes. Go back to 2014 for the last time that has happened, and they're a point away from reaching 60. And we already told you, you have to go back even deeper to when a Morgan State team scored 60 points. And there's 11-13 to go, so they may reach that 60-point mark. Yeah, and Rico Kennedy nearly had the two-point conversion there on a bot snap on the extra point, but for all the plays he's made in his Morgan State career, he couldn't catch that football in the flat right there thrown by DeAndre Harris. It's been a great day for the offense. Johnson, 112 yards rushing. Chase, 100 yards rushing. And then you have two wide receivers with Bailey and Walfolk over 100 yards receiving. And Harris with 317 yards passing for the first time. A quarterback has thrown for five touchdowns uh, since 2014. Wide open. That is Johnny Rembrandt. And he is in for the touchdown. Wow. Three touchdowns for the Dragons, and they have all been long pass plays. Brown provided two, this time in at quarterback Marcus Davis with the long touchdown to Johnny Rembert with his second touchdown of the game. Rembert has great ball skills. You see this ball was underthrown. He had to stop, wait for it, go up and get it all hands, and then hold it in and bring it in for a touchdown. So great job just adjusting to the football we've seen this a lot from these dragon receivers what a day rambert is having five catches 186 yards and two touchdown they go for the two-point conversion and it goes back to number one johnny rambert who has the two-point conversion 
and it's now a 59-20 score with 10.56 to go in the fourth quarter. So the Dragons, they still have some fire. Nice grab there by Rembert. What a day he's having. Cold day at Morgan State, Hughes Stadium. The Bears lighten up the scoreboard. Dragons had that last score, 72-yard pass play. Davis to Rembrandt. Rembrandt, five catches, 186 yards, two touchdowns. He's been the star for the Dragons offensively. Yeah, they've done a great job, man. I've been impressed with the, the way these guys competed, especially on the scale position. Rembrandt has 186 yards receiving, and if you look down this receiving core, 37 and a half yards a catch. Short kick, trying to catch Morgan State off guard, unable to do that, and Morgan State will have the football at the 46-yard line. One thing, Emory, that they weren't able to do this year was run the football. Only 44-yard average, and you look at Newman, he has 71 yards, so not, not bad. They, they were able to run the football today a little bit against Morgan. Yeah, they're receiving core, too. 28 yards a catch, 23 yards a catch, 16 yards a catch, and you talked about Thomas Newman. 4.7 yards a carry. To me, that's great against this defense considering yeah, what you're running behind. Hey, remember last week, Martin, one of the best Could receivers in the country, only had, you know, uh, under 70 yards rushing. Yeah, he couldn't get anywhere running the football. And so now they're trying to run the football and they're having success against this very good defense. Holly in at quarterback. Tyler Holly in at quarterback. So Holly in, replaces Harris, Harris's day is over. The senior, Harris, was 11 of 17, 317 yards and five touchdowns. Great day for Harris. And now we see Tyler Holly in at quarterback. They are very high on Tyler Holly. Uh, they talk about him a lot around the program. 6'4", about 215, redshirt freshman. <laughs> Handoff straight ahead. Johnson has the first down. Johnson over 100 yards rushing. His first 100 yard rushing day of his career for the freshman. So Holly at Perry Hall High School, Maryland guy. It was a two sport prep standout at Perry Hall High School. Dual threat quarterback was selected as the Baltimore County Player of the Year. Holds all passing records at Perry Hall was an all-state and all-regional basketball selection and helped his team win a state championship in basketball. So a lot of talent. Also played in the Big 33. Parker with the give and gains a yard, and that's it. So Morgan State, big win last week at home, upsetting the number 14 team in the country. And the game they were expected to win here today in 0 and 8 team and now now they go on the road and they need to get their take care of business next week against Howard in Washington DC in the Beltway rivalry to end the season with three straight wins and I know coach Wheatley is going to make sure his team stays focused and they'll be ready next week when they travel on the road oh there's a ton of tape to show this team about this ball game and why you should maintain that focus uh, because we saw them come out flat and then we saw them turn it on, and we saw them let up a big play on this last offensive series. So there's a lot of teaching tape here for Coach Wheatley to show his squad this week to help prepare them for that game next week against Howard. Kelly couldn't hold on to the pass from, from Holly. Incomplete. That was a good throw right there by Holly. So third down, third and nine from the 41 for Morgan State. It's been a day where they've... And a great banner day and a great stat day for them. A lot of firsts. We mentioned many of them. The first as far as amount of points and five touchdown passes for a quarterback. It's been a long time since they've done that. And Morgan's going to take a timeout with 8.54 to go. So some confusion there offensively. So it's been a banner day. Two uh, running backs over 100 yards rushing with Johnson at 124 yards and Chase at 100 yards. And then Bailey, 117 yards rushing. Walfolk with 124 yards. Wes Walfolk was the story of that first half. Not only did he have two touchdown catches, he also threw for a touchdown pass, a 44-yard touchdown to Bailey. And you see right there, big number six, the quarterback, DeAndre Harris. How impressive has he been the last two games throwing the football for Oregon State and provided that balance for this offense? It's unfortunate for this offense that he's not a junior because 
these are the type of building blocks that you want to see from a player going into next year. So now you're going to get a look at a whole new crop of quarterbacks for Morgan State. With Harris, you have to be happy for him because he's finished strong uh, with his Morgan State career throwing the football. Harris in high school was a four-sport athlete in Washington, Georgia. In football, basketball, track and field, and tennis. That explains a lot. His footwork has always been excellent, in my opinion. Holly looking for Cofield and incomplete. Just like how Coach Bill Parcells talked about he won his he, – he, if he had to pick somebody from basketball to play football, he'd take the point guards and put them at corner because of how they have to play defense and how quick you have to be. Tennis, a lot of the skills translate to playing quarterback and how you move your footwork. So fourth down, and the Bears will punt the football away. Just their third punt of the game. Nick O'Shea will punt it away. Fair catch called for at the nine-yard line, and that's where the Dragons will have the football. So Thanksgiving is coming up right around the corner, not this Thursday, but the, the next Thursday. And make sure you're watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade because the Morgan State Magnificent Marching Machine, well, they'll be there making their Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade debut. I know they're excited about that. And 150 students make up the Magnificent Marching Machine. They've been in appearances at NFL and MLB and CFL games and civic and school performances. They've appeared in movies and in radio stations and even at the White House. But in a few weeks, they'll make their debut appearance at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I know I'll be watching for the Morgan State Magnificent Marching Machine. Always are entertaining here at Hughes Field, and that'll be a great day for them on Thanksgiving. Run up the middle by Newman. Newman, he's trying to close in on a 100-yard rushing day. 80 yards now on the day rushing for Newman. Second and short coming up for the Dragons. If there's been one impressive part of this game. It has been Newman, but we see a new running Yeah, that back was Roan. Roan's a big guy, 5'10", 225. Three. So Davis fires, has a wide receiver wide open deep, and the Dragons, can they do it yet again? Another big pass play for a touchdown. Four long touchdown <laughs> plays by the Dragons. The second one by Davis as he sprints down to celebrate the touchdown, and it's been the deep ball has been incredible today. That's just another big moon shot <laughs> by Davis, the quarterback. Marcus Davis, he threw that football about 50 yards in the air to Jalen Byers, who hauls it in for a reception. So it's a great job. And then Byers uses his athleticism to make that guy miss without touching him by changing his angle and going toward the pylon. It's another big time play. This game may not be over with the way they're throwing the football. So that goes for 84 yards. And that was Sedby, who has the second touchdown grab. So he's now all of a sudden four catches, 169 yards, and two touchdowns. Incredible. So now you have Rambrant, who has 186 yards, and Sedby, who has 169 yards, and both of them have two touchdowns. That one was 84 yards. Of course, Sedby opened the game with the 81-yard touchdown. So four long touchdowns. Going for the two-point conversion, and it's no good. So another long touchdown pass play by the Dragons, and it's a 59-26 score with 7.54 to go here in the fourth quarter. So Davis is in relief of Brown, and he's 4 of 5 for in two touchdowns and 173 yards. So Davis has been playing well at quarterback. If you're playing defensive back for Morgan State, against this receiving core, you have to understand that no pass is out of the realm of completion with the way these quarterbacks can throw the football deep down the field. They've operated on all deep shots. Nothing short to intermediate to try to work the offense. It's been touchdown all or nothing with this passing game. So where is the safety? Why, why are you able to get four long touchdowns like they have? 
Coach Wheatley might want to know that too. <laughs> I think they're they're gambling, man. They're keeping it. They tell you defensively, keep your eyes on your luggage. So if you have the deep third, stay in the deep third. Do what you're supposed to do. Do your job, so to speak. And you can't keep allowing big plays to happen because you're keeping your eyes not where they are supposed to be. Cofield calls the fair catch for Morgan State. So the Dragons are going to head back to Lynchburg tonight. And, you know, they're going to say, yeah, we went up to Baltimore and had a big loss. But they're going to say, man, we had four awesome touchdowns. We had four big time moonshots, as you like yeah. to call them, uh, long balls that were that went for scores. So. It's going to help them out, you know, this offseason when they go into spring workouts, winter workouts into the spring. You know, if they can just show up up front, I think they have something here to work with. There's no foul for offside kicking team. First down, Morgan State. And again, we don't know what the situation is at Virginia Lynchburg as far as their football program. They're, again, they're not affiliated with the NCAA. Um, so it's a little different situation. So, you know, as far as, you know, what their spring workouts look like and how they get their players. Uh, but, hey, for a team that, you know, we, we couldn't get a lot of information on uh, coming into this game. And, you know, we knew they played a lot of other teams and the MEAC and SWAC teams. And, um, but, boy, they to be able to have that big pass playability has been, been something of a surprise, I would think, for, for my first look at the Dragons. Holy. And a holding on Morgan State. Ten-yard penalty. Still first down. So you look at their quarterbacks. Brown, 10 of 20 for 239. Davis, 4 of 5 for 173. That's some big-time numbers. And both have thrown two touchdowns and also an interception. So the total, they are, what, 14 for 25, throwing the football over 400 yards That's passing. That's good. That's impressive. Yeah, it is. Parker on the handoff. Gets a couple there. So next year... Do you agree that the MEAC is is open as far as there's a lot of teams that could be in the mix? Absolutely, because you look at FAMU, a lot of those guys outside of Ryan Stanley are juniors. And we talked about the quarterback. We had that game here. Their quarterback is going to be good. So they're good. South Carolina State is a team full of juniors and sophomores. Very, very young. South Carolina State's young. Central is young. Is young. Morgan State. Delaware State. Exactly. So I think and Bethune Cookman is young on defense. And I, I think when you look at the MIAC as a whole, to be quite honest, it's probably going probably to be the most competitive we've seen it in years. Norfolk State always has talent. They're up on Delaware State now, 23 to 10. But State always has talent uh, it, down there with, with um, you know, with their, with their program and how they're able to recruit on defense, the defensive line and the offensive line. So this is going to be one of the more competitive MEAC races we've seen in quite some time. Third and 12 for Holly in at quarterback, replacing DeAndre Harris, who has five touchdown passes today. Cal Kelly with the catch to the 31 yard line. The fourth down coming up. Well, it's a final. North Carolina AT wins 47 to 17 over Bethune Cookman. So it looks like the Aggies will be the team to represent the MEAC and head back to Atlanta, Georgia, into the Celebration Bowl. That's a big win for them and for that program. And Bethune-Cookman is still a team that, you know, that they have a little bit of life, let's say, for an at-large bid in the FCS playoffs. But in order for that to happen, they have to beat FAMU. And that loss last week to Delaware State really that hurt was their huge. chances. So the back-to-back -back losses for Bethune-Cookman. So Bethune-Cookman has the uh, Florida Classic next week against FAMU. And, of course, North Carolina A&T will play their rivals Central to wrap up the MEAC season, regular season next week. And, of course, Morgan State will be on the road with their rivalry game against Howard. And Howard is playing today at 4 o'clock against FAMU, who's ranked 12th in the country. But, of course, FAMU is not eligible for the FCS playoffs or the MEAC championship. What FAMU is going through this year with the way they're playing and how they're playing and how they're ranked, Reminds me a lot of that 94 Auburn team that was ineligible, but they went undefeated 12-0 during the, the, the regular season. They were just beating the brakes off everybody. I see FAMU doing the same things. Just sets the table for them next year to be a very strong team in the conference. Roan 
Kevin Roan, or Calvin Roan, gets the handoff, and he loses a yard. So second and 11 coming up for the Dragons. 5.05 to go here in this game. Morgan State up big, 59-26. Back-to-back wins for the Bears. They look to make it three in a row next week. No gain on the play. Coach Tyrone Wheatley in his first year taking over this program. Wants to turn the Bears into a MEAC power. We've had this conversation in the past. Had three or four wins, and if you you know take a year or two to be able to turn things around. Look at this Morgan State team, mm -hmm. and we talked about this a lot. Where you look at Morgan State outside looking in, like wow, they have defensive line play that's excellent, offensive line play that's excellent. We talked about the linebackers being the best four in the MEAC. There's pieces here for someone to step in and be successful, and you see it a lot throughout the conference. Pieces together. And it just takes the right coaches to have to pull it all in, tie it together, and make it a competitive football team each and every week. Third and six for Davis and the Dragons. Another deep ball. And the pass is knocked down. So fourth down coming up. It's a great job right there by number 33. Just facing up and going up and batting that ball away, getting themselves in position to make a play. Ari uh, Booker, the linebacker, another freshman. Again, a ton of these freshmen are getting playing time in this blowout situation for Morgan State. On their 48 yard line. Fourth and six for the Dragons. For Davis. Pass for 173 yards and two touchdown. Got a fire, and the ball was tipped and incomplete. Nearly picked off by Morgan State. Morgan State with two interceptions in this game. Almost had. Their third. It's a good job right there by Tariq Irvin, the freshman, getting to play on the ball and nearly had his teammate get the interception off the bat down. So just a great job, Trig, driving on that football and breaking it up. Looking like Richard Sherman out there with the with the dreads in number 25. Morgan State with 651 yards of total offense, and that is the most since they had 625 yards of total offense all the way back in 2004 against South Carolina State. So 651, the most since 2004. Holly in at quarterback, in for Davis. Give to Parker. Parker good run, picks up six yards. It'll bring up a second and four. There's a big upside to the two running backs, both Parker and Johnson. Johnson, who has 124 yards and a touchdown here today, and, and they're really high on Parker. They think that this kid from Houston, Texas, is really going to be something. And it opens up that pipeline down there in Texas as well. So now they're able to go back into the state of Texas and pull out some more recruits. We know Texas is one of the more fertile grounds for recruits. And now that you've opened up that pipeline down there in Houston, no less, not only do you take some out of that state, but you also weaken a team like Texas Southern, who's recruiting right there in that Houston area. And it'll be interesting to see how Tyrone Wheatley and his staff recruit. This will be uh, their real first opportunity to go out and, and do some recruiting. Holly keeps it himself, gets a couple of yards, third down coming up. But I, I think, you know, when you look at things, Coach Wheatley has improved the areas he needed to improve. We already talked about this. The, on third downs, they're better. You know, they're fourth in the MEAC now on, on third downs offensively. Third in the MEAC on the fewest penalty yards. They're only averaging 62 yards uh, penalties per game, which is a lot better than the last couple of seasons. Just that area they still need to clean up is those turnovers, right? The, the, the negative 15 in turnovers, too many interceptions and fumbles. And, but when they have good quarterback play like they've had the last two weeks, they're, they're, they're a good team. Holly gives it to Parker. Parker slides his way close to the first down, and they're going to give him enough for a first down. That'll move the sticks with 1.56 to go. So Parker now 50 yards rushing. So banner rushing day for this. Morgan State team. They're closing in on a 300-yard rushing game. So it's been great offensively on both ends. Their offensive line got a, got off to a great start, just opening up a lot of lanes 
for those running backs to run through. We saw Harris be efficient throwing the football, 11 to 17, but five touchdown passes. You saw the receivers do a great job winning their one-on-one battles. You could also say the same thing about Virginia Lynchburg's receivers as well. So we've seen a lot of great offense today. We've also seen seen a lot of hustle and heart for both teams, especially Virginia Lynchburg coming here, getting off the bus 40 minutes before kickoff and playing a, 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 what I think is a very good game. Victory formation for Morgan State. It'll be a 59-26 win, back-to-back wins for Coach Wheatley and his Bears. Three wins now on the season. They'll go for their fourth win of the season next week at Howard in the Beltway rivalry. Coach Wheatley will take the phones off, and even though his team's winning 59-26, he looks like he has some things he wants to correct. Oh, he has a lot of things that he wants to correct. You can see it in his face. He has already checked off about 10 things that he wants to bring up in this post-game meeting with his players. And, of course, his son, Tyrone Wheatley Jr., a grad student playing his last college football game today, started his career at Michigan and played at Stony Brook and finished up his career with his father here at Morgan State. So there is Bobby Rome. He'll head back to Lynchburg and shake the hand of Ian McBurrow and come across and say hello to Tyrone Wheatley. So for my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt, I'm Phil Shaner saying so long from Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland with the final score, Morgan State 59, Virginia of Lynchburg 26. Thank you for watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.